Blank check with Griffin and David. Blank check with Griffin and David. Don't know what to say or to expect. All you need to know is that the name of the show is Blank Check. But this ship can't sink. She's made a podcast, sir. I assure you, she can. Glad that we got the baby in the room tone there. Yeah. <laughs> and she will. <laughs> and she will. All right, guys. Uh, part two of Titanic. We're going to jump right into it. Podtanic, Blank Check, Griffin and David, the two friends, Podnator, Judgment Cast, Filmographies, Baby, Producer Ben. <laughs> glad that you... <laughs> Glad that everyone. This, I'm glad for anyone who this is their first episode of the podcast. <laughs> I can't think of a better entry to our world than this episode. All right, so we're talking Titanic. We took a break. We're back in the studio. We ate some pizza. Uh, we got a we got a fussy baby in the studio. Yeah, the third guest is uh, he's rejecting Titanic. Guest three. Point. Yes, <laughs> he's selfishly asked guest two to leave with him. <laughs> we know. just got so upset when he started thinking about all the lives lost. Yeah, I know. Then, you know. He, he was a big Leo head back yeah. in the nineties. We said that no one in this room really rapped Leo Mania, but that's not true. <laughs> <laughs> Charlie Rich. Charlie. I mean Charlie. Uh, Charlie Baltus. Baltus. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, right. he he does. He's not a public figure yet. Uh, so I'm going to give some final thoughts on basically th- what I want you guys to talk about. <laughs> Is the geography in this movie and the way that he makes you makes it clear where everything on the ship is? I totally agree and with you. What's going I'm on when it's sinking and like that. and how scary water can be when it overruns all that stuff? He does an amazing job. We talked about the the recreation of the sinking on the computer and how that adds to it. But the, yeah, the, that's the, what makes this movie incredible. The doors busting open. Like the, knowing what the significance of a deck, b deck, c deck, yeah. like oh, setting oh, up absolutely. that hierarchy. Yeah, and he yeah. does so many sort of like sweeping shots. Like it almost you would almost argue it was. Repetitive. He keeps on doing those sweeping shots from outside the ship. It yeah, goes sort of around. zooming around it. Yeah, it just gives but you down such the hallway, the tilted all angle that. down the hallway. That's yeah. like one of the with the doors all busting open. Yeah. Oh yeah, it's great. Yeah. I think that's yeah. all CGI. And oh, even like getting so ahead cool. of ourselves. So when Leah's handcuffed to the pipe, and they keep on cutting to that same shot from outside the port, and the window. water levels mm-hmm. going up. He just. I mean, we. Said I this, think this ship may sink. <laughs> we've said this a lot with Cameron. It came up in uh, I think our Terminator episode, Terminator Two episode. Um, but he is like kind of the master of spatial geography. Yes, he really for, is for the scale for of the films he makes. Scenes, yeah, especially. but even I mean, just it's like, why to me Avatar stands out as an action movie in ways that people don't understand sometimes. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah, because you have a lot of scale. You have a lot of creatures of different sizes. No, but yeah, no. So I just feel like it's like if someone does something, there's a cause and effect yeah. that he very clearly represents. He's like a, a cause you know, and if, effect, even filmmaker. if it's a big thing. Yeah, yeah. Katie, so, back to you. Oh no, that was the main thing I wanted to say. Oh, and, geography. Uh, I'm yeah, out. No, kind of. Yeah, I mean, I'm gonna be. I'm going to be listening to this, obviously. Sure. Uh, Charlie is going to listen to, and he's going to have a lot of points that you guys didn't make. Yeah, he'll he'll sort of he'll gesture and maybe put his hand in. He'll his be mouth. commenting on Reddit actually <laughs> yeah. about everything you missed. Um, Charlie's so- brutal on Reddit. <laughs> yeah, I know. Baltus four twenty. <laughs> <laughs> So, uh, <laughs> uh, so yeah, so we just look forward to coming back for the uh, old dogs uh, series. Yes, so. of course. Yes, yeah. uh, Katie. You're the best. Guys, it's great to fun. have you on. Yeah. I'm uh, glad you got to be on Titanic. Me too. Even though you I would have been became a mother I know. in between you saying, I got to be on Titanic. I know, that's true. Like Titanic. months ago, yeah. I, I volunteered for this. And then that time I had a baby. And mm-hmm. you guys uh, kindly invited us both. That's right, dude. Yeah, now Rich. he's talking. <laughs> I know. Fighting in the war room, little gold man, Vanny Fair. That's right. And uh, at Katie Rich on Twitter. K-A-T-E-Y for all their spellers out there. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah. Rich yeah. like Richie Rich. Yes. Oh, boy. Okay. Cut mm-hmm. us off. Oh, boy. <laughs> uh, Charlie, thank you for being here. <laughs> Thanks, Charlie. It was Thanks, nice Charlie. to hang oh, out with you. He's holding onto the phone. Yeah, he loves the headphones. Charlie, yeah. do you have any burger reports? <laughs> <laughs> that was pretty good. He'll That's come back good in one. 10 years and explain what that meant. <laughs> okay. Oh. Okay. Goodbye, Sean everybody. Penn, huh? Safe trip home. <laughs> thank you. Bye. Okay? Okay. She's good. She's good. Uh, so we're losing... I- the mother of Charlie, but we're retaining the mother of Blankies, Emily Ashita. I want to say that this is twice in a row now that I've been in on a four-person mm-hmm. podcast, Ooh. and the other person has had to leave in, in, in the and middle. Out. Yeah. Uh, I feel like maybe I'm too intimidating. Yeah, I feel like I drive people out of the room. Yeah. You just have a presence that overwhelms. Yeah. It's, you know, you're just you're such a big personality. <laughs> part. That's part of it. Huge. <laughs> For the listener at home. Nothing uh, like a big personality. <laughs> Love a big personality. Honker. <laughs> Bigger, bigger. <laughs> For the listener at home, I would describe uh, Emily as a bruiser. 
Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. A bruiser and a brawler. <laughs> I love the word bruiser. We don't say that enough anymore. I try to, I've been trying to use it a lot lately. I think well, it's funny. For this yeah. entire podcast, they can't see at home, but I've just been like standing sort of, I've been standing the whole time mm-hmm. yeah. and kind of looming over yeah. Katie and Charlie. Arms kind akimbo, of, right? Yes. Like, kind of, yeah, <laughs> like <right. laughs> Very Trump style. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, right. Occasionally, you would you would like uh, make this the o- a okay symbol yes, the way I would does. make a yeah. little a it's little a circle. <laughs> yeah, I'll say this too. Uh, her, I mean, blood dripping off of her knuckles this entire time. <laughs> Weird. And at first, I thought it was someone else's blood, but they haven't. It hasn't stopped dripping. Yeah. So now I just wonder if she herself has bloody well, knuckles. Uh, and... During our break, well, also before the podcast, I went in and I was I was uh, so mad about uh, about the Titanic, just the situation. In yeah, general, it was just situation. a bad situation. So you think I went, it was mishandled? I, well, no, I went into the bathroom and I punched the mirror. <laughs> <laughs> what if yeah, we go into the? You say, I just got before I go to the bathroom. It's just a shattered mirror with blood dripping down. Emily's hand is wrapped. Women and children. <laughs> <laughs> Emily's hand is wrapped in a UCB tote bag. Oh, Emily, <laughs> Emily. Uh. Because we we aren't doing the usual bullshit we do to pad out and the beginning of an episode. Right, uh, pad out. What are you talking about? Come uh, on. You this is a good time for you to talk about Titanic Adventure. Out of right. Time, so if this you want is to. my merchandise spotlight. Oh although it, it doesn't have anything to do. It actually predates yeah, no. uh, Titanic the movie, much like uh, Titanic the musical, which we discussed before yes. we started. And the Peter Gallagher miniseries it, PBS we found out about. I mean, some some of this stuff was definitely cashing in on the fact that Titanic was the biggest thing in the world, but some of it is also just like. Was it just time for us to be into the into the Titanic? It is interesting that it all. I mean, the Titanic wreck was found in eighty five, okay, and that rekindled. I feel like a lot of interest in the yeah. Titanic. So I think that was part of a general sort of groundswell of like a new generation really getting obsessed with it. They tried to raise the. You know, there were all these concepts. So can we bring the wreck back up? You know, yeah. so. I don't know, and like then the deep sea diving is happening, so maybe it was they just have the more artifact exhibitions. That yes, go around. right. There yeah. was that touring, and so mm-hmm. it was just in the ether. Yeah, mm-hmm. uh, and uh, I don't know. There's also the great Douglas Adams book, Starship Titanic, which was also attached to a video game. Oh. Very strange. Uh, Douglas Adams and Terry Jones from Monty Python wrote it together, huh. and oh, it's about cool. the idea of it is it's Starship Titanic, which is like. The sea ship, like a big, grand, amazing yeah. thing, and it has a spontaneous existence failure in its first minute of like so. It's and so it just blinks out of existence, <laughs> and then it like reappears later. And these like uh, journalists like go on it to try and figure out what happened. Very oh. weird little book. Can, can I ask a sidebar question? Just because I I invoke my sister a lot in this podcast because since we're like a decade apart, you do it, invoke her a lot. Yeah, but it's uh, it's often an interesting generational test for me to see like. In terms of the, uh, you know, public consciousness in terms of, like, what is popular and what isn't. You know, it's, like, mm-hmm. 10 yeah, years. No, absolutely. Well, right. How much of what you're into is generation- generational and how much of it is kind of timeless. Yeah, and right. I think, and, like, yeah, I think a lot changed culturally in those 10 years between our childhoods. Um, mm-hmm. But uh, I feel like when this movie came out, not just because there were other Titanic projects, although there certainly were. You know, this wasn't like, oh, finally, they've made something about the Titanic. Like... Other shit had happened even in the years leading up to it. Mm-hmm. But I just felt like Titanic was a story that everyone knew. Like, it was sure. a big American story that was yeah. talked about a lot. Yeah. And I wonder if for my sister's generation, it's like, predominantly Titanic is this movie. Right, yeah. Like, they know it as the thing that that movie was based off of. Yeah. Whereas, I... like, before that, there wasn't a definitive Titanic thing. Yeah. It was like World War Two. It was yeah. like, there are movies about World War Two. It's a big crazy thing that happens. Like, Pompeii. Right. Yeah, like, exactly. And now also, there's the I can't definitive believe it took Pompeii movie. them that long to make a Pompeii movie and they, and they after blew Titanic. It. And they yeah. blew it they blew because it. they could have put a, a Pompeii movie into production uh, as soon as it was clear that Titanic was the biggest thing in the world. It pro- like, I don't know. I feel like an early like an early aughts Pompeii would be better than a 2015 uh, or whatever. Pompeii. I believe Roman Polanski was trying to make one he for was, a while after was. The Penis. Like hmm. that was it, sort of his blank check. Hmm. Goal. What? What are you laughing at? You, you said penis. Yeah, after the penis. That's what that movie's called, right? The movie about Adrian Brody's wang. That movie's um, called the penis. Am I wrong about that? It was. Um, he wanted to adapt uh, Robert Harris's novel Pompeii. Okay. Right. I think that was his big idea. Yeah. And I think it, it was, was going to be canceled because of the strike or the threat of a strike. The writers guild strike. The a threatened SAG strike that never happened. And it um, was Scarlett Johansson. I think. I think it was Scarlett Johansson. Right, I want to say Lando Bloom and Scarlett Johansson. Thank you. Ooh. Huh. Well, I mean, like, they basically got the poor man's Orlando Bloom, and that's saying something. It was Kit Harrington. Uh, is that Kit Harrington. Yeah, yep. that's a 
That's a good. I mean, I don't know if he's the poor man or Orlando Bloom because that just seems crazy that there could be. There a poor could be. Man. That's what I'm saying. That's some, there is that is saying something. Yeah, yeah. But he does get. I mean, Orlando Bloom is in a lot of large projects that are successful for um, for a second yeah. there. Yeah. Yeah. Um. Or was. Yeah. Look, we've uh, talked anyway. about Orlando Bloom's penis enough on this podcast. <laughs> we should talk about something else. All right. Okay. So I uh, what what I wanted to speak about though, and uh, anybody who knows me in real life has and has had uh, a couple of drinks at least with me. Uh, has definitely been a party to my uh, long spiel on the greatest video game uh, after Mist ever, or greatest CD-ROM game, I should say, oh, ever cool. created after after uh, Mist, which is the best, um, is Titanic Adventure Out of Time, which was a 1996 uh, CD-ROM game. By the company Cyberflix. Cyberflix. Did they make Not Netflix. Else? Yeah. No. They no. really lost out there. Uh, oh man, I remember that logo. Uh, I must ask: Is there a colon in this title after Titanic? Uh, I think it is a colon. Okay, yes. I love yes. colons Titanic in my titles. Titanic colon yeah. adventure okay. out of time. Yeah. Okay, great. Sounds okay, good. so so the premise of ti- well, okay, so here's the the main thing that that I think was the selling point of Titanic Adventure Out of Time is that it includes more or less a complete uh, computer generated model of the ship that you can click around right. and travel up and down in. And, and it looks like the details are pretty. Oh. For 96, yeah. It's it's not bad. And it's uh there are these like weird talking characters that are like a combination of like puppet animation and actual photography, which is really spooky. Um it's... Yeah, I mean like look at any oh Yeah, it's really scary. Um But is that was that mid nineties video game yeah. thing mm-hmm. where they would use photos like you know Oh yeah. yeah. Um oh, that's uh that? if you go to my Tumblr right now, that's at the top of it. Um <laughs> <laughs> I yeah. So I'm it, going right to her Tumblr. Yeah. Uh, I don't tell anybody the address of my Tumblr. If they missed out, it's too late. I missed out. See? <laughs> <laughs> um. Right. Anyway. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> so so a Titanic Adventure at a time. Uh, you are a uh, secret agent, uh, a British secret agent. Uh, uh, in World War II, it opens on with right. you. Is there some business with Hitler? Yeah, so you're you're in the middle of like fire bombings or whatever or the 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 blitz in London and you're um apparently you were on you were on a mission on the Titanic that could have potentially stopped World War 1 and thus World War 2 um but you failed at this mission but then your apartment gets bombed and you travel back in time to the Titanic to get a second chance. Was it a time bomb? <laughs> apparently. I mean, it's kind of it's very high concept. Yeah. Um, so you're on the Titanic, but you're dealing with like Germans and like a, 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 a some kind of Slavic stowaway. I forget where he's from. So like, uh, the, yeah. What was his name? I am. I am Vlad. I think his name is Vlad. There's a really amazing uh, uh, part. Vlad where, Demonic. Yeah. Demonic. Serbian. Oh, that's subtle. Yeah. Is he a Demon- bad guy? <laughs> Um, <laughs> there's like, there is a whole plot involving a very, a priceless diamond necklace Ooh, and uh, a fake copy that you have to switch back and forth. It's very, uh, eerie. And the it whole stars Leonardo LaCaprio. <laughs> <laughs> good, good. Uh-huh, uh-huh, uh-huh. Um, so had you been playing this before you saw the movie? No, I got it after because sure. like, I, I think the thing that, you know, <laughs> like, I feel like Katie and I did this more than you guys did, just insisting, like, well, we were really into the ship, though. The oh, ship sure, is, right, like, really right, the, right. The, the cool thing. Uh, but that was the thing that stuck with me uh, after seeing the movie. It was, like, I was very interested in uh, uh, the, <laughs> my other theory that I presented to you before we did the podcast, which is that the fantasy of Titanic is living and dying and falling in love in a mall. Uh, <laughs> which that's is a, That's why, some good shit right there. <laughs> which wow, is why wow. queens are into it. I mean, it is like yeah. a hotel, but it's also like a whole society. Everything you need is on it. Yeah. Like a mall with a church in it and also wish, a gym. Yeah. yeah, there was a squash court on the Titanic. Court. There yeah. was all kinds of... There was a gym with yeah. weird exercise machines. I wish we could have seen and it's all that. It's that weird kind of like mall thing. Well, I mean, if you go to a cruise ship now, they're all essentially malls, floating malls. Right. Yeah. And but, Right. And you've been on a cruise. I've never been on a cruise. I've been on a cruise. Yeah. As of two years ago, I went on a cruise. But uh, so it's that weird thing of like hotel, mm-hmm. uh, but also, mall, summer camp because nobody can leave. Well, that's the thing. <laughs> right. But it's also everyone goes to the mall. You can meet anyone at the mall, yeah. right? Like isn't that like, it's a weird democratic mm-hmm. sort social of strata is destroyed. Paths with right. somebody you never would have crossed exactly. paths yeah. with. Yeah. At um, the, you know, 
Accessorize. That's a British <laughs> store. I no, know. I know. I know from Accessorize. Okay. Right. I'm just now bummed out that um, Dawn of the Dead isn't a romantic comedy. Like now, I'm thinking about like that's the <laughs> one element missing from that movie is like the star-crossed lovers thing. I mean, there are not nearly enough mall movies. I think, frankly, for how much the mall at one time was a part of American culture. Now I'm thinking about it. But look, so much was said. Mall rats. What's there's, left? There's scenes from mall and there's mall rats. What and else? Mall rat. Got? But mall rats covers it all. It's a classic. It's a rats. perfect all-inclusive screenplay. <laughs> the all women, encompassing, look, all-inclusive. Look, I don't think Mallrats is very good, but I do think that the female characters are beautifully written. Beautifully totally written. three-dimensional. Yeah. I haven't seen Mallrats in like a thousand years. <laughs> Sucks. Uh, it's, I, what are some other mall movies? Uh, Scenes from a Mall is the movie where Woody Allen goes down on Bette Midler in a movie theater, right? Correct. All yeah, that, that movie I shouldn't think exist. Of right now is the episode oh. of The OC where they got stuck in the mall. Paul Blart Mall Cop. Oh, right. Paul Blart Mall Cop, and, too. And also, uh, Observe and Report is almost yeah. entirely set in a mall. The but two, that's doing like creepy mall. Right. Chopping Mall. Chopping Mall, The Two Dawn of the Deads. Uh, mall movie. I mean, that is the best uh, dead movie, though. Like, I, I agree. Know. That is the best episode. Does uh, Night of the Comet take place in a mall? It has a lot of mall stuff. Right, but it's not exclusively mall set. Ba- Bad Santa mostly takes place in a mall. Oh, that's true. Hmm. <laughs> uh, how, many, how many movies take place on a boat? <laughs> Uh, Titanic, are you trying to get us? Are you trying to pivot back to Titanic? I am very loosely <laughs> trying to pivot. What a pro. <laughs> what a pro. <laughs> I know. I've been on a we need Emily on every week been just on to pivot podcasts. us. Uh, all right. Hire okay. me for your podcast. <laughs> You're like a podcast coach. Yeah, yeah. yeah. we got podcast a lot of money. We, we've actually we've been bleeding money, like in the reverse sense. We have too much money to spend on this podcast. Our budget's too big. We need to hire more people. <laughs> yeah, that's definitely what's going on with us. All right, Titanic. Titanic. So we left it at right in the middle of the movie, right there in the middle when she's about to throw herself overboard. Yeah, right, right, square in the middle of the movie. Great job. Um, anyway. <laughs> So, so there's um there's a whole a lot of roll on the nose dialogue where it's like, uh, I can't pull you up, you have to pull yourself up, all that stuff, which it gets repeated multiple times. Mm-hmm. There's a lot yeah. of very like strong telegraphing that like, oh, Rose isn't some helpless girl, sure, um, which I f- feels a little obligatory to me, but that stuff usually does. He likes that kind of obligatory stuff. He's a yeah. big fan. Uh, I think this scene you really think turned me is, off as a 15-year-old. I think this cute? is why I started to get cynical watching the movie as a teenager, you know? Because she's about to kill herself? Yeah. Who would do that? Also, um, I, also no, the fact that like, he's like, he's like, oh, you're not going to do it. Like, that's, she, she's that's in a, pretty rough. She's yeah. in a pretty tight dress, and she went all the way over to the other side. Like, I don't think this is a cry for help. Like, yeah. she... It's almost crazy that she doesn't die. Like, you know... Yeah, yeah she's... It, the reason I don't like the scene is the... A, that it then you have to have them struggling like she slips and he pulls her up which and then you, it looks like a thing right you need it because there has to be like a thing for him it's, to get invited to it's dinner it's a little clunky to it's, me it, i also don't love it but everything it activates in the story i like sure you know i mean the, the explanation of how he gets invited into this other yeah, world yeah, and all of that i like but i don't the, think that would ever have happened but i no, do like I that either. i do like that billy zane is the one to invite him because that and and the way he invite where where he's like hmm you're still unhappy no one's like she oh. almost fell off the fucking ship yeah. Yeah. like suicide or not let's like like we need to take her inside give her that. a glass of water like yeah. Rose is not pleased and he's like what hmm, to do what to do <laughs> hmm, Dawson you know come entertain us and that's with your poorness yeah. right and that's of course before yeah uh, before then he's just like oh, 20 should do it like yeah yeah, yeah good old cal cal almost feels like a character who's just verbalizing his entire inner monologue like <laughs> right. there's no inner because thoughts. there's no one to check him there's no right. one yeah. to say hey man that's at all i mean male privilege much you know he thinks all of his thoughts are worth sharing with the oh, world you're so woke i'm pretty woke yeah. oh my look God. i don't want to say i'm an ally <laughs> But low key, no, I'm an ally. Say. Yo, low key, low I'm key. an ally. Low key ally. Yeah, isn't it great when people tell you how much they're an ally? That's always not suspicious That's, at all. There's no red flag there. No red flag there. <laughs> but literally, no one respects women more than me. Um. So she gets invited to dinner. Oh, uh, and before that, then they have another stroll on the deck where he teaches her how to spit. And then yeah. there's a very awkward moment. Yeah. Um, I kind of, what do you, yeah, I mean, and, and, and it's also when she sees his painting, or is that after? That's the first time that they take a walk together, because she's like, that's when they have the one uh, obligatory beat of like, oh, she's annoyed with him, now they're kind of fighting, and then she's like. Well, you're being rather rude. Yeah, and then she like, 
out of nowhere is like, oh, I hate you. Let me grab your sketchbook. I, I can't stand you. What are these anyway? And you're in your le- Why does he have them with him anyway? What an obnoxious man. I guess he has oh, nowhere no. to put them. This is this is the takeaway from this, this as you as you are as you grow older and you watch this movie. Uh, if you were ever swayed by the notion of Jack Dawson being a romantic character, once you are actually into your late twenties or thirties and have met some Jack Dawsons, <laughs> you are like that guy sucks. <laughs> <laughs> that guy. Yeah. Check out my never... charcoal drawings of old ladies' hands. Right, though. which is like <laughs> equivalent to fucking playing like Wonderwall at a party on an acoustic. Yeah. You know, like that's like the same move. Yeah. Uh, also, another thing that I, I know this is not very uh, not a pleasant subject, but please, I mean, Jack is not a virgin, right? One assumes he is not. I what mean, he's been hanging out with a lot of French, uh, prostitutes. Prostitutes. French ladies of the night, old French yeah. whores, yeah. Um, and uh, and Madame Bijou. I, don't I know. feel yeah. like Rose definitely doesn't come out of this whole situation. <laughs> <laughs> and like she probably had a few surprises, unpleasant surprises when she got back to New York. Is what I'm saying. Oh, you oh, think yeah. he oh. may be okay? All right, yeah. You know, look, it's 1912. But I mean, she how, does how live till she's a hundred. Yeah, so. uh, she I didn't get gonna... syphilis. I'm not saying syphilis, but maybe something sure. else. Crabs. <laughs> and the clap. Yeah. Um, <laughs> but uh, but then again, of course, the she does. She doesn't okay. perish, so that's pretty good. No, yeah, yeah she totally yeah. lives. I mean, also. <laughs> I don't know. Maybe he. Yeah. Maybe he didn't even put it in. We don't know. We there, just know that. We just know that she puts her hand on the glass. There is that. And they're scene, very though. sweaty. There is that scene when she so- first boards the ship and she tells Bill Paxton to put on a condom before they shake hands. <laughs> All right. <laughs> I'm just saying that's a, it's subtext. Okay. It's, it's All right. subtle. All right, we're moving on. I would. I mean, I, I shouldn't even be mad at Griffin because Emily's the one who brought this Thank up. Thank you. Good job, Emily. Thank you for alley ooping me. Sorry. I, I feel like Emily has a lot of theories. <laughs> and this is part two is where she's going to air out all her theories. Yeah. I feel like that's probably. Oh, I left my note. Oh, wait, no, my notepad's on. The, I have some theories on my notepad. Cool. This is why we call Emily the theorist, the mother of blankies. Um, <laughs> okay, so he goes to dinner. Yeah, wait, there was dinner. there was something I wanted to say. Oh, uh, all these scenes are kind of lost me. I mean, I, I think they're just. I don't think I care about young Griffin. I got to be honest with you. Well, I think they're. But even watching it now today, I'm saying I still like it goes on more easily because I'm able to view the movie as a whole and understand what they're setting up. But I still think they're like the clumsiest sort of clunkiest scenes in the Definitely. movie to me. They feel a little, dare I say it, they feel a little Anakin Padme to me. Oh, like, I don't agree with the that. The early chunks where they're not no, really getting nuts. along, no, where you're they're out. sort of like no, fighting no, no. with each you, you other. You went too far. They're not anywhere no, near as they bad, have but chemistry. they have touches. They have touches. It's that. The, I don't agree with this, Emily. No, I don't agree with it either. Yeah. I think they do have chemistry. I yeah. think that is the difference. Yeah. Like that's the, that's the thing that also makes the film work because yeah. you do I believe just, that I don't they're like them argue. I don't like watching people argue. They literally only argue. that They argue for like, for like one five minute. seconds. Yeah, and it's like an argument. He just says, know. "Do you love Cal?" And she's like, "What? Like, how yeah, can you ask me this?" Yeah. Well, you're. And she calls him annoying at one point. Yeah. I, it, it's very cute. The other thing is, I think the whole thing is just cute. Like, I, you never really feel like they're married. Maybe, maybe it's just like, I mean, but this is the other element of it. Is whereas like, in Anakin Padme, just to be clear, she's like, you know, I feel like a system of laws and governance is good. He's like, I feel like someone should just tell everyone what to do. <laughs> As they're like rolling yeah. around in the grass. Yeah, also, fuck sand. <laughs> yeah, um, yeah. I mean, if you want to compare those two, like they are yeah. really nothing alike because. Uh, Anakin and Padme are like a couple where their love is like they are talking about government and very big <laughs> ideas like that and like yeah. that's what half of their conversations are about True. and this is a love story that takes place within two days practically within two days mm-hmm. and within also a, within a, a, a system, setting a that system, is a yeah. microcosm yeah right, but yeah. they don't talk about it at all yeah, I really. like that. I, I mean, like there's that. very uh, few allusions to the fact, like, oh, I know how the world works or whatever. But it's not like they're sitting there, like, dissecting, like, oh, the, 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 yeah, the, no. the aristocracy sure. or it's, whatever. It's just like the that. broad stuff of, like, you know, let me show you a real good time down in steerage, you know, with the yeah. the fiddle and the they, Irish they dancing. Each and... are representing the thing that they're not talking about. Right. 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 Um, and, you know, yeah. and he teaches her how to spit. Like, yeah. Yeah. Well, I think, you know, I mean, a big difference is that, like, all of us saw this movie for the first time when we were younger than the characters. Mm -hmm. Sure. And we're now all watching at a point where we're, like, you know, like, at least in terms of, like, worldview significantly older than the characters. 
where you can like watch this as like a nostalgia thing, not just for like when the movie came out, but it's like, oh, this is of very youth. much a young love movie. Yes. Versus like for all of us when we were watching it, it was some sort of meant to be aspirational sort of like this is what love is. This is sort of mm-hmm. like standard bear. And so I, I mean, all this stuff goes down for me more easily now because the stuff I find kind of annoying. I'm like, well, teenagers are annoying. They're a bunch of fucking. But teenagers. also you have old bros contextualizing yes. everything and the fact that like it's a memory play it could be it could be a uh, like just a young love story about something burning bright and hot and then getting dunked in an ice bath sure yeah. uh but instead it is about the memory of this one thing and it's not the thing i love about this movie i thought i thought i was going to save this for the end but i'll bring it up now one thing that i like about this movie a lot is that it's not that like she has this great love and then she survives and she never loves again. Right. She has this whole life. I love yeah. that. And she even gets married and has a kid. He, like he freed her from a life she didn't want. It was yeah, an and awakening. She got to have the life she yeah, wanted. That's the and biggest that thing. Seems the force like reawakens. The importance of a young love is not that this is like your only love you're gonna ever have, but it's gonna be like the thing that kind of kickstarts your life in a way, or like yeah. it awakens you emotionally or whatever, even if it doesn't last. And I think that that is like a very mature perspective and mm-hmm. like. Yeah. Like worldwide perspective on like what otherwise is a pretty insubstantial young love type story. But I mean, yeah, that, and that is I I what sells that last moment of the movie, yes. which we'll get to. So great, yeah. the pan over the pictures and yeah. then you know returning to yeah. That and having been Jack said. still sucks. Yeah, oh, he's all right. <laughs> he's a little bit of a fuck boy. I like Jack. A little, a little oh, bit everyone's a fuck, a fuck boy these the Cameron days. Cameron's fuck boys. Cameron's got a he lot of fuck boys. He doesn't. He waits. He paints her nude and then they 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 don't. Do anything till they get to I'm saying fuck boy because it's all about fucking. I'm saying like fuck boy, like oh, fuck. Yeah. Um, can it, I, Jack just has less of a personality, right? Right. He's, he doesn't really I have a personality. Well, he's a, he's magical. He's, he's a mad. he's, he's a little magical. magic or he's a but, manic pixie dream boy. He right. really right. is. Yeah. And like that scene manic pixie in boy. the dinner table where he's call. suddenly just spouting these canned lines where he's yeah. like. You know, a week ago I was uh, just a piece of shit, and now I'm yeah. on the Titanic with you, fine fellas, yeah. and all that stuff. And like, it's like I'm like, did you? Are you running for yeah. office? Like, Gives you yeah. lemons. Yeah. It's also like if you're this charismatic and charming, and all these rich people love you, how come you have the life? Right. You, I guess he wants that life. That's the other uh, thing. I'm, like, oh, uh, <laughs> I'm gonna throw out the other like mild gripe because obviously I love this movie, right? But this is a mild gripe. I think I'm gonna win the two of you over on. Shaq's drawings. <laughs> kind of basic, right? They're okay. You know who they're drew very... them, right? J- Jim Cameron. Yeah. Really? Yeah. Which makes sense because they're very, very technically proficient. Yeah. They're very, they feel very contemporary to me again. They yes. do. So. That is very true. And they feel yeah. very clinical to me. Yeah. Which makes sense from Cameron where it's just like, oh, he knows how to draw a thing. There yeah. is some weird thing about them where I'm just like, well, they, of course they look good. They're Jack's famous drawings from the Titanic. Like, I've just seen them so many times now. <laughs> and the style is so instantly recognizable to me yeah. as... Jack Dawson, you know, circa 1912. It's just, uh, but every, no, I mean, every time it, it, I watch this, the moment I have the hardest time swallowing it is when she looks at the drawing and she goes, Jack, these are. No, she's like, these well, are very good. Well, these are good. These, these are, are very, very good, good actually. Yeah. And then she, like, has to sit down. <laughs> okay, cool. It. You know, like in New York City, like the people they have in, like, Times Square and Central Park who, like, aren't the caricaturists, sure. but they just have, like, the semi realistic portraits. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Like, that's what they look like to me, where it's like, this is someone who, like, yeah. learned how to draw technically. I think it's very nice that Jim Cameron knows how to draw that well. I, I think I think that draw, being able to draw from life is a sign of character for me, even if you're not a good person. <laughs> yes. Yeah, so he's a good observation, observation from Emily Ishida. Yeah. I, like, I totally agree with that. Yeah. As somebody who's, like, mom, just, like, that was one of the first things my mom ever taught me how to do, was just, like, draw from life. Which so. I cannot do at all, so I must be a piece. Yeah. My mom was the same way. Yeah. My mom, I, I draw a lot in this because my mom uh, taught me how to draw very yeah. No one in my family has any artistic ability, so. My siblings don't draw. I do. My mom does. Uh, her her grandmother drew. Uh, anyway. <laughs> so he dines with them. Every I like the, I, I like, draw I really like uh, <laughs> Kathy Bates. Yeah, it's, it's just ridiculous. It's just ridiculous. I sharpen a pencil. <laughs> Yeah, did you say shut up because I agree with that? I was say, shout to out the page. Shout out Celine. Yeah. Uh anyway, uh Kathy Bates. I I just I Wonderful. Yeah, she's wonderful. Okay. She really yeah. saves these scenes. Uh, these sort of like really, really silly, ostentatious, be very hokey. Yeah, it, in the wrong hands. It could yeah. have been very hokey. And uh it just, I mean, like, he's using the, you know, obviously he's kind of molding the Molly Brown iconic sort of character. I mean, she wouldn't even have been called Molly. She wasn't called that until after the the Titanic sank. She was Maggie Brown. Oh. Uh, but, like, that's, oh, okay. I feel like this is the trickiest play. Like, you know, 
uh, like we get that she would like Jack and that she would like give him oh, yeah. a give him a coat and tails and she would like teach him to yeah and she serves important story functions in that way of like teaching him how to be able to like you know acquit himself right you know in this... eat the silverware the right way yeah yeah, yeah work from the outside in or the inside out I always said wrong outside in um outside in. We, there's a character we haven't talked about a lot who you uh, briefly invoked as uh, the Titanic Terminator oh, oh Spicer yeah. Lovejoy which is an Unbelievable by, character. Played Dave. by David Warner. Great character name. Stark and Tron. Stark and Tron. I uh, mean, that whole scene in the hallway is just uh, Terminator again. Yeah. Like, it's yeah, amazing. He, he does, <laughs> like, even the blade running yeah. to a degree while wearing, like, a three piece suit, like, it a waistcoat. Great. Well, this is where, this is where David, other David, uh, brought up the point that I have to credit him with, which is mm-hmm. that in that scene watching it, it occurred to him that Leo's hair does look like John and Connor's hair. Oh yeah, the swoop. And that it's, yeah, yeah. And there is that scene where Leo's wearing the public enemy T-shirt, <laughs> <laughs> and he hacks into an ATM. Yeah, yeah. And and he just blasts like fifteen seconds of "You Could Be Mine" on a boombox, <laughs> <laughs> like just enough oh, that then they John can say Connor, it's the song my heart from... beats for thee. I love him so much. I mean, Edward Furlong had he not fucked up, he was. I think he was talked about for this role. Oh really? Really? Yeah. He he was he was supposed to be what leo became right like kind of like the dreamy yeah. boy the teen girls like i mean you know who With they the should have so like you know who they should have screen tested for this role who? the real john connor producer ben <laughs> okay he's not he can't hear you he can't he can't talk i know i'm just saying i would have loved to see producer ben be in titanic uh there is that famous um story that uh ben Tannock. that kate went like screen tested with Leo and then said to James Cameron like he's really good even if you don't hire me you should hire that guy yeah hmm. uh, which I like isn't there am I misremembering or is and then there... she harassed James Cameron for the role like really harassed him really? yeah mm. she would like call him every single day and say I have to be Rose I have to be like she just like <sighs> uh, worked him as hard as she could wow. I'm trying to find who some of the other people who tested were. well I, I feel like I couldn't tell if I was misremembering or not because I didn't get a chance to crack the special features but I feel like on the blu-ray there's a screen test an earlier screen test she had done that's her in a set with Jeremy Sisto. Am I wrong about yeah, that? Yeah, because he was very close. Right. Yeah. Which is weird. I oh. like Jeremy Sisto, but this film would not have worked with him in the role. Hmm. I think he's too abrasive, actually. I think Jeremy Sisto yeah. is a little too strong She's a presence. He's kicking while he's down. Fuck, he didn't even get to be in the movie. <laughs> I like Jeremy Sisto a lot. One time he sure, came into sure. the comic book huh? store I used to work at, and I sold him a bunch of books, and we had a nice talk. We talked about comics. Well, I think it is sort of a... Important though that 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 Jack not overpower Rose. I agree. Yeah, that is true. That's really important. Cameron wanted Jared Leto. That was his number one choice. Jared wouldn't even audition. He would have drowned himself for the role. He would have fucking. I oh, I gotta be in ice for six months. Fucking Jared Leto. How do you feel about Jared? Me? I would not have been Uh, into that. Either of you? No. 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 Even though it was, you know, my so-called life, Jordan Catalano. But again, you know. too contemporary. I mean, I will give it to Leo. Like, he doesn't look out of place in the film, in the world. Like, I oh, believe that he could. classical. Yeah. Yeah. Um, here's some other. Paul Rudd auditioned. Uh, his own father. <laughs> that was would a... have been bad, too. I mean, that would have been my favorite movie. <laughs> Remember Paul Rudd in Romeo and Juliet, though? <laughs> yeah. Because yeah. I mean, literally, he gets oh, rejected man. for Leo. Yeah. Oh, my God. Uh, he... he was Paris. In He's the... Paris, yep. yes. Red Tannic, I would with be the, totally on board with. the astronaut. Oh, my. God. Yeah, it's yeah, so he's cute. He's so cute. And then there's that scene where like the fireworks are going off at the mm-hmm. party, and he turns around. And he's like, he's like so excited about the fireworks. <laughs> I love it's it. It's like yeah. a little preview of like later comedy ride. Yeah, like, yeah, he yeah. does a total like red face. Yeah. <laughs> uh, he his father was an avid Titanic historian, and he reeled off all these technical info, info at the audition, and apparently they didn't care. Uh, Stephen <laughs> Stephen Dorff. Oh, that, that would be how I tried to get the role. To be <laughs> yeah. honest, yeah. I'd come in with Wikipedia on my phone. Just I, read a... I've done that in the past for auditions. It never works. <laughs> I'm telling you. But I know everything. Yeah, yeah but I've... I care about this. And they're like, "Get the fuck out of here. <laughs> yeah. We want to pay someone to say Stephen shit." Stephen Dorff. I'm seeing. Over Stephen here. Dorff uh, rejected the part. Billy Crudup rejected the part. Ooh. Hugh Grant was offered Cal and turned it down. Yeah, he I mean, would have been an okay Cal. He would have been oh, great. Yeah. He would have overpowered the movie though. Quite I think that's the problem. He would have been too. He would have popped too much. Yeah, yeah. Caleb Deschanel, who we talked about on our Jack Reacher podcast, tested for Jack Dawson. He was the cinematographer and was fired what? by really? James Cameron because they disagreed on the lighting. Wow! And Russell Carpenter shot this movie. He did a beautiful job. He did. It's a it's a gorgeous movie. Yeah. God. Wow. That's fascinating to me. Hmm. 
Um, uh, I mean, yeah. Leo was so clearly the choice out of all those people you listed, and it's it, you know it's not just a hindsight twenty twenty thing. I think some of them are better actors, and some of them are worse actors. Oh, she did oh. shit. I'll t- I've got a backpack. I'll take them. Cool. Um, but it is uh, it's like crazy to think that like he's the one guy who could have been. I mean, it's there's a similar thing like around that same time, uh, Independence Day. There was like twenty five guys sure. that turned it down before Will Smith, and the movie wouldn't have worked with any of the other twenty five guys. Um. One pet, one last piece of trivia. I think Ethan Hawke was close for both Independence Day and Titanic. I sure. think he was considered. That. Yeah. Uh, one last trick. One last yeah. piece of trivia, and let's get back to the plot. Sure. On the set of Titanic, Leonardo DiCaprio's pet lizard was run over by a truck, but with some TLC, DiCaprio nursed him back to health. Were you guys talking about a Terminator? Yeah. Terminator. Pugsley the lizard. What if He's he an had adopted Pugsley? What wow. if Leo's lizard was Pugsley? Do you think that Leo's lizard dying was like where he lost his way? Yeah, he never recovered. Yeah, yeah. And the last thing Pugsley said. Then he's like, "I'm gonna go be in the beach. I don't know. I don't know. I'm not thinking." Yeah. What should I do? And then he turns. Then the cage is empty. He's like. (laughs) The last thing Pugsley said to Leo was, "Win an Oscar." And then Leo was like, "At all costs, yeah, I must. I'm sacrificing everything." Okay, Pugsley. Pugsley. So. Guys, that was weird when he said that at the Oscars for the Revenant. He went for Pugsley. <laughs> Amazingly, we we I have to press us to move on with the plot, huh. even though this is part two of a two part right, episode. Right. Can we make it a three party? <laughs> uh, so they go to dinner. Uh, you want to go to a real party? Yeah, they go to the real party. This is my least favorite part of the movie. Oh, I love this part. Okay, Emily go on. just gave me a little. Uh, hmm. side I'm eye. throwing some side. Eye. I'm throwing some shade. I, just, I fr- found it tiresome this time watching it. Yeah, but it, usually I find it to be fun. See, I like real salt of the earth. Well, people. this is exactly the, what I hate about that's it. That's what I like. His, I think I talked about it in part one of our podcast. His fetishization of immigrants, especially Irish immigrants, is so hacky yeah. to me. And it was also partly that I lived in Britain and was like, you know, closer to, like, I knew yeah. Irish people. And like, it's especially in Britain, like, you're so attuned to that sort of top of the morning yeah fucking you know fiddle and step dancing irish stuff that's like does just... the score bug you i actually love the score it's okay. so corny but i love it i mean i like horner he's corny yeah. like yeah. the rave hearts to call james corner they should mm. and they they should and maybe one day they will yeah okay they just high five uh, uh yeah. nope <laughs> no, I, I can't hey. take credit for this um but uh i played oh. the uh the uh score for for a highlight from the score in my seventh grade orchestra <gasps> what did you play Emily? unable to stay played, unwilling to leave i played <laughs> never an absolution I know never an absolution sure. take it or see mr murdoch great one Ooh, uh, great that's one. that's the that's the best da, 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 yeah, oh, it's so good. What did you uh, play? I play violin, oh. um, and I—I I mean, I think it was a vastly abridged, simplified score, but it was seventh grade. It was Titanic. I, Everybody wanted did to do they make you thing. play. I think it's a great score. Uh, I the, think it's the, 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 the oh no, it was great. On it is so um, good. The you know the the sort of the voices, synthy. yeah, the synthy voice. And uh, at, during never unwilling to stay, unwill, unable to leave, which uh-huh. is one of my favorite pieces of music, which is when she jumps off the lifeboat. Yeah. I announced to Joanna, who was watching this movie for the first time with me, I said, this this piece of music is called uh, Unable to Stay, Unwilling to Leave. or uh, Unwilling to Stay, Unable to Leave. Yeah. And she laughed at me mockingly. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, in my face. Yeah. Wait, why? For knowing that. <laughs> because I was like, this is a beautiful piece of music. And meanwhile, the music is like, do, do, do. <laughs> I don't know. Wait, which it's one is this 17. one? I'm going to find it. Which, which play, play a snippet of it. It's called Unable to Stay, Unwilling to Leave. I don't remember. I don't think we played this. Um. Emily, at this recital, did they make you all play in a sinking ship? No, we didn't have the budget for that oh, one. That no, I, I didn't go to school in Brooklyn, so hey, uh, yeah. hey, <laughs> hey, West Village at the time. <laughs> um, oh, yeah, 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 yeah. It's the very no, that's, synthy that's, organ yeah. stuff. I mean, it's the intro for uh, "My Heart Will Go On." Oh, right. Sure. Like, yeah. My yeah, pencil. no, it it, it 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 switches when it makes the switch to that is like when you realize, oh yeah, everybody's gonna die. Titanic. Yeah, it's, it's like it's, the it's hopeless Titanic. moment in the whole progression of. It's the- what's playing. Titanic. Shut up. It's what's playing when the firework explodes behind him. Yeah. Titanic. Yeah. Um, it's great. I love. Anyway, and it also has like. You know the, the mm-hmm. weird. Oh yeah. Da, da, da. yeah, 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 yeah. You know it's a very simple. But that's music the end. Too. That's the end too. Right. Yeah. It's also at the end. Uh, uh, he, you know, a very simple Warner music cue I love. Oh, he reuses a lot. 
Uh, a very simple music cue that really works for me in this movie. The first time you hear it is the first sight of the iceberg. But that's for, like, the danger cue, which is this very ominous, drawn-out, like, nah, nah. I did a really bad job approximating You really it. did. <laughs> can we, can we sample that, that Remember later? that great piece of music? <laughs> 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 All right. Um, so the romance stuff plays out next, after the dinner, right? There's, like, the dinner yeah. upstairs, the whiskeys and brandy, all life. I mean, the brandy and cigars, all life is a game of luck. Yeah. A lot think- of great lines up there. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Well, go ahead, Emily. Uh, start from the outside. Uh, yep. Then, then you want to go to a real party. Uh, you think you're big, strong men. Uh, I thought that was sort of annoying. Oh, when she goes on point. When she or goes what, on yeah, point. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, it's a little lame. I feel embarrassed. Hacking. I feel embarrassed for her always in that scene. A little I'm bit just because like, you think they're gonna be like, "Wow, like you're yeah. just like I don't know what the point of that." Yeah. Yeah. Or like you can do stuff too. Yeah, yeah, too. Yeah. <laughs> um, anyway. Uh, what happens after that? Oh, and then uh, uh, the T-1000 sees them. Yeah. Uh, and Spicer then Lovejoy. The next... I just love this first name is Spicer. That's I don't believe anyone Spice says Spice Rack Spice Lovejoy. Spice Rack Lovejoy. Spicer. Spicer Lovejoy. Spicer. Uh, I mean, I, I, I can't, you can't make this shit up. No. Um, uh, oh, and then and then Cal throws a fit and, and he turns the tape below. Oh, right. That scene then... plays out right because he right he hears about yeah. her going down below deck. He's like, I thought you would join me tonight, which is very spicy. Speaking of spice. Yeah, yeah he's... A, I didn't even think about that. <laughs> he's trying to mack on her before they get yeah, married, yeah. which is not this cool. Is not and she's 17 years old. Mm-hmm. But yeah, maybe he's just like, look, we're on a boat. Like, I gave international her this giant waters. diamond. <laughs> yeah. He gives her the... the, the he gives, he gives her the diamond. He already gave her the diamond, so I feel like maybe at this point he's just like, what? why don't but you... But that is a, actually... That's a scene that scared the crap out of me with it when I was a kid because I had never seen a movie. I was eleven that had any kind of domestic violence theme yeah. or anything like that. And when mm-hmm. he turns the table over, it's really frightening. Mm-hmm. Now I guess it seems more ridiculous. My wife, my wife, or whatever it is, he like uh, mm-hmm. upsetting. Uh, but I like that Cameron sticks with her crying yeah. and like trying to blow it off to the maid as like we had an accident. But also trying to clean up and, and trying to clean the up. The maid and, won't like, let her clean up. Yeah. Which is very... The, the maid gets some shit right then and then right after. Right because after. Because there's the corset scene yeah. where Frances Fisher, who's her mom, what's her mom's name? Uh, Ruth, comes in and she's like, get the fuck yeah. out of here, maid. Yeah. And the and the, the corset is punishment yeah. thing. Very, very real. Also, like, I mean, any any girl who grew up watching a lot of historical dramas, like, wanted a corset anyway. And so I think in, the, in that scene, you're like, oh, maybe it would suck. Yeah, right. If your yeah. mom did it, like, it would suck. <laughs> <laughs> And that's, I mean, I guess we need that scene. It's where the mom's reminding her, like, look, yeah. we may be old money, but we're not rich and you got to do this. Now, yeah. okay, I'm curious about the scene for you guys because I remember as a kid when she starts crying about being a seamstress and, like, we'll lose all your things and oh, stuff. Oh, sure, yeah, That right. seems very, she doesn't seem very sympathetic at all. You're like, oh, this lady crying, like, what's she? But, like, <laughs> I, I, think, I think now watching it, I think she's a little more sympathetic in that. I, I think too. I think the film does a great job by making her both a villain, you know, yeah. but mm-hmm. but totally illustrating her like fully limited perspective. Yeah, like she is not a person who is evil. Yeah. Like Cal's kind of evil, you know. He's like a mustache twirling villain. She's literally just like she just doesn't understand anything, and she yeah. can't conceive of a life that doesn't involve her exactly. Being. And like, yeah. and the crucial moment is later, obviously, when she's like, "I hope the steerage people won't be on the lifeboat with me." And right, she's, yeah. oh, bother, shut up. Yeah, yeah and yeah. Uh, like that's like the final breaking point. They never interact again. No, yeah. that's it. That's like. She but abandons have, her mother. There's some really good reaction shots for Frances Fisher. Frances she is Fisher's one a very, oh, a very good actress. Yeah. So good in this, yeah. There's very the shot uh, well. towards the end of the movie. Um, and she was married to Eastwood, right? Wasn't she? Yeah, right. He's been married like 50 times. She at least... Yeah, she had, was married to him for yeah. five years. Yeah. No, not married. Partner. Okay. I think they had a child together. Francesca. <laughs> Boy. Hmm. Francesca Eastwood. She yeah. is... Known for starring in Mrs. Eastwood and Company, an e-reality series. Oh, right, that thing. She is a frequent figure in Blind Items. <laughs> oh, <laughs> interesting. Um, that's the only way I know of yeah. anything about her. Uh, um, no, I was going to say, uh, I, I think limited perspective is a good term. I do feel like a lot of movies that um, want to have like adversary characters who aren't quite villains, Like it, that's a really useful tool because... like. Uh, even just, you know, I, I'm kind of against movies where it's just someone who's, like, evil for the sake of being evil. Right. And it's always kind of more sympathetic if you have someone who, like, thinks they're doing the right thing yeah, and can convey yeah. it and they just don't understand. 
yeah. the way the world actually works. No, yeah. having a bunch of people who think they're doing the right thing versus somebody who's like act- actually trying to just Always yeah. Yeah. be Movie better. Yeah. yeah, I mean, just but what is what what Cameron has struck on that is so clever mm-hmm. and then a movie like A Night to Remember didn't really struck on as much as that's a very cool movie mm-hmm. is the idea like you, like the mall idea they're all stuck together mm-hmm. yeah. even if they are separated out like it's still he can go up the staircase like it's not hard for these people to interact with each other right and like that's why like you almost understand why Cal is so phenomenally evil cuz like when else like his only other interactions with poor people would be like, "I put my trust in you," and shaking yeah. their hands. David just uh, put uh, fake money in my hand, uh, <laughs> Monopoly money. He brought just for that joke. Yep. Um, do you think? What do you think if there was like a modern remake of uh, of Titanic, like the way that Shakespeare companies sometimes do the hip new take on uh, Two Gentlemen of Rome? Yeah, <laughs> or sure, whatever. right. Or, right. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's uh, set in a Depression era carnival, but it's Titanic. No, but what? no, but it would be set right now. What would saying. the real party be? Oh, like what would the right where he he takes her from the stuffy like penthouse bar or yeah. whatever? Where does he take her to? There's nothing. I don't know. What's I mean, authentic having, anymore? Having there's no space to do anything like that. They wouldn't give yeah. you a free rec room on any kind of ship to go. Well, have again, like yeah. a, you've been on a cruise, so you know yeah, better than well, I. Were I you mean, in steerage? No. <laughs> Oh, I, you, had, wait. I had my own mirrors. Wow. And, uh, wow. no, I, I don't even know how a cruise Emily, works. Like, is it, timing us with is your it the same way? So, like first class, second class, third class? Like, is there that? There are um, there are definitely different uh, uh, classes of uh, room. Sure, I mean, you pay and, more, you get a better yeah. room. Yeah, and you can. I mean, maybe uh, higher up in that oh, room my, with yeah, the balcony. Emily. Well, I should just. My my boyfriend performs on a cruise, Humble so brag. it was like, no, we didn't have to pay for. Yeah, it was very nice. Yeah. So, but any, so that's my my close, and of course, of course, getting on a cruise ship for the first time in my life when I am right. thirty, mm-hmm. I immediately am like, oh, this is just like Titanic. Take her to see like, Mr. Murdoch. That's the first thing I think of. I'm like, let's go to the front of the ship and let's stand at the the bow. And of course, you can't do that. Like they won't <laughs> let you. There's a rope. You can't go. I imagine that you probably couldn't go all the way to the front on the Titanic. Maybe, I imagine although, that that's a little ahistorical. It might be. Who yeah. knows? I mean, also if you shot, could, though. it would be full of people. Who right. are looking a lot of people over... would want to do that. <laughs> right, right. There if, were, if, there if were anyone was allowed, 3, everyone would do it. people yeah. on the Titanic. Right, that's the place they're going to want to look. Is yeah, the front. it's so cool and exciting. And like, you wouldn't be able to have a private right. moment and kiss somebody and fly. Wait, right. There. Whereas Jack's like, hey, do you want to hear this? So, the actually, spot I hang out all the time is the front of the ship. <laughs> this is like my favorite place. Good thing. No one yeah, checks out real, yeah, nook. real low key, yeah. but actually great views. Yeah. Honestly, uh, we should. Yeah, is that? It's right around then that they do the. I'm flying. Right. When is that? So, so okay. Here's the. So that's the first. I just watched this first. No, the first kiss doesn't come for a while. So they, so he gets mad at her. Mom gets mad at her. They have the church scene, uh, oh, yeah. oh, and they yeah. sing for those in peril on the sea, which they really did sing yeah. um, mm-hmm. on the. the we the should service. note <laughs> that, like, despite some supposed inconsistencies, Cameron was obsessed with oh. period detail. Yes. Like yeah. the china the is meal. exactly the meal is what was served that mm-hmm. night. It's. You know, the, if you look at paintings of like the grand staircase, like you know, he's trying to get everything exact. Yeah, what? and you know, the only change he made for the 3D re-release in the Blu-ray, right? Well, he added a third dimension. Yes, but but I mean, for the remastering, right? If the Blu-ray, What's there's the, one oh, no, change the Milky the Way, yeah, right, right. You changed the constellation because a fucking bummer town. Neil deGrasse Tyson McTyson, was like, yeah. actually on that night. The stars were like this. <laughs> oh my god! So he changed it. Yeah, yeah, that's the only thing. He is like uh, keeping all the effects intact. <sighs> and apparently, Katie was telling me, R.I.P. Katie, no, no, we love you, Katie. Oh, she's I, still alive. Yeah, I know. I was just joking. Um, I <laughs> so feel bad the second I said it. funny. Negative no, five. But, no, but, but uh, Katie was just telling me before that on the commentary, he rants about like, well, apparently the stars are wrong. I mean, maybe I'll fix that. But it's... And in it's, the, the commentary is attached to the fixed movie, right. so you see him complaining about something. Oh. In the background, you can hear him punching Neil deGrasse Tyson <laughs> in the face <laughs> under the table. Go, Jim, stop punching me. Okay. okay, so 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 Jack tries to go see her at church. I don't know why. Yeah, that's uh, actually a weird move. And by he's him. like, but it's very much like the club thing of like, I was here yesterday, right. and like, no, you can't come that's in when anymore. He, he gets his twenty. Lovejoy gives his, him yeah, the twenty. Yeah. Then yeah, and then he he corners her after. In the gym. Right, he pulls her into the gym. And is like, hey, we should be together. You're the most amazing girl I've ever met. Which he's is like also, a weak line. He's like, also, do better. He also, also says you're no walk in the park. Like, first he yeah. nags her a little yeah, bit. Yeah, yeah. Now that I'm thinking, yeah, Jack's being kind of a creep. No, Pulling her into it. the gym? Yeah. No, I don't know, fine. man. Yeah, he, um, yeah. I, yeah, And you're right. His, line, his pitch at that point... I forgot that it happened, and when I was watching it, I was like, oh, this is kind of flat. It's like, not a good yeah. pitch, because yeah. it's like, 
I know it's like I know how the world works. I don't have anything to offer you, but you're awesome. But also, you're not that awesome. <laughs> <laughs> but maybe you could be awesome. Yeah, and and you're a little Dawson. Yeah. Also, maybe that spitting <laughs> thing. No. <laughs> yeah, I tell you to spit. Don't you owe me? Yeah, yeah it's it's very weak. Uh, anyway, she uh, she says no, and and uh, they part ways. I forget what changes her mind. What uh, changes it's, her mind? It's it's some interaction she has with the Richie Pants. I I also forget. I mean, there are lots of shots of her, like, where you see everybody else talking around her and she just stays, like, you know, mile, mile long stare or whatever. Uh, I don't, thousand yard stare, sorry. Yeah. A yeah, mile. yeah. Um, I'm trying to think of what, what, what. I, I can't, I'm bracking my brain. She just, like, went and opened up an issue of Tiger Beat and saw Leonardo DiCaprio she on was the like, cover. Oh, right. He is kind of a big deal He's right now. He's kind of a big deal. I mean, I, I don't know. I, I don't want it to look like a status play, but. Uh, so, but then, then, for whatever reason, he's standing on the bow again, his favorite spot, and she comes up and is like, I changed my mind. I'm gonna, I'm not, I don't know. I'm trying, I'm reading the script right now. Oh, boy. Oh, my God. It's gonna take forever, David. Okay, so we should talk a little bit about I'm Flying, Jack, I'm Flying, because it is so, um, it, it is one of the, the legacy yeah. scenes of this movie. Uh... I also feel like, like a part of why. Oh no, it's right. I remembered it. Okay. I'm, I'm glad I looked at the script. And by the way, I just put Control F Gym. There is a previous scene that they cut in which someone explains the gym and is like, "Here is the gym. Oh. We have all the machines." No, she goes to lunch with her mother. Her mother's like blathering on about oh the invitations we had to send them back, and she sees, oh, she the, sees little the little girl, girl. Yep, who's being right. made to sit upright and like yep. put her napkin in her lap properly and all that, and then she like gives her that that's the thousand yard stare. Yeah. And uh that's and right. that's when it clicks for her and then she uh Also I watched in, it was in that scene and I wrote it down because there is some kind of crappy CGI in that scene in the background. And I think you see it throughout a little bit. Sometimes they do these sort of weird foggy looking animations of people in the oh, background. Oh, like walking in yeah. the background. Huh. There's one yeah. in particular, there's one moment that stands out to me, but I'll get to that when we get to that. Yeah. Uh what I was going to say about the Jack and Flying moment is like I think I there was a bit of a struggle for me to like accept this movie because by the time I had seen it I had already like digested yeah. most of the movie through osmosis, like yeah. in pop culture, yeah. where like there were so many different elements of this film that were parodied rather than like a lot of famous movies. It's like one scene or one mm -hmm. line or one mm -hmm. image. And it was like every part of this movie became iconic and even like supporting characters. Sure. And I remember like SNL doing like, well, this sketch is just a parody of the Bill Paxton stuff. Right. And right. this sketch is right. just a parody of like the flying moment or whatever, you know? Mm -hmm. So like watching it for the first time, like eight years after it come out or whatever, it was kind of like a checklist of like, okay, there's that thing I know. There's that thing I know. Yeah. You were a and little so, out of it. Yeah. And like when I watch it now and I've like, you know, come to like be able to watch the movie for what it is. Um... None of that sticks out to me other than the flying moment. Hmm. Like, when I watched that, just because that moment became such a visual signifier and then everyone fucking repeated it and sure. everything for, like, five years, it always takes me out of the movie to no fault of the movie's own where I'm just like, oh, here's that thing. Here's that thing they got to hmm. get to. I, I, I'm not going to do it because we don't have enough time, but I wish I could read you Cameron's, like, stage directions, essentially, for the flying scene. It is some goofy shit can you read a little bit no <sighs> a little bit but there is this yeah can we one sentence i mean i do find it to be romantic i think so too i think it's, I think a lovely it's very scene. romantic yeah it's I mean, just it is it's silly tough. as hell it's tough because like it's dolphins. been dolphins i think the well, yeah. yeah i think the only thing is that she it's it's at this point in the movie she said jack so many times yeah she does say jack she, and i think and i forget that, who it is Somebody, I think Jezebel maybe did like a, a countdown of who says each other's name more mm -hmm. in the movie. And I think he actually says Rose more. Because by the time the ship is sinking, all they're really doing is yeah. barking each other's names. Each other. yeah. all, right, all right, here's the one little line I'll read. Jack and the ship seem to merge into one force of power and optimism, lifting her, booing her forward on a magical journey, soaring onward into the night, into a night without fear. That actually sounds like erotic fan fiction, right? <laughs> that uh, that sounds like so someone wrote that on she's the... kissing the ship. Yeah. 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 Is Jack fucking so, a portal? That is, What's I, going on here? We should know. That is when you have that dissolve. Merging. You have yeah. the dissolve of it back to the wreck, and you yeah. do cut back to Gloria Stewart. And that's the first time since the beginning I we've think gone so. back to yeah, There I might think. have been one cut but in that's early. what feels and that's when like she the says, halfway point also. Then. Right, because she right. says that that's the last night. Uh, yeah. That's the last time Titanic, Titanic saw, saw sunlight. Sun. So maybe yeah. that's 
where we should end part two of our Titanic three parter. <laughs> um. So at that point, what? Okay, so they go back to pretty the, quickly. The, the she's crew. like, "Yo, paint me without my clothes on." Yeah, because <laughs> they're at dinner. You have to while pop she... me like one of your cast girl. No, no, they're not at dinner. No, I'm saying like the others are at dinner. They're yes. not at dinner. Oh this right, is, right. Emily wanted to make this I clear. This time. It's very I true. I think very important. Okay. Jack and Rose skip dinner. Okay, Ben's walked into the room, and. He... <laughs> <laughs> All right. Okay. Okay. Ben right. has walked into the room. He's put on headphones before saying anything. <laughs> no. He handed me a drawing of me naked wearing the heart of the you. ocean. This is supposed to be me or you? That's you, baby. Yeah, that's what I thought. The glasses are a little round, but other than that, Turn I think around, the likeness please. is really good. <laughs> so we'll post this online. It's pretty good. But this wow. is the attention to detail in the hand. Yeah. Look at his use of color. <laughs> <laughs> I'll say this. Shadow work too is really on point. <laughs> I'll say this, and I'm a little embarrassed to admit this. He got his my my chest hair almost exactly right. Wow. Because it's like just six isolated <laughs> why, strands. Why do your eyes look like bug alien eyes? Well, because Very I'm trying to look like a French girl. I'm trying to give the alluring kind of come All right. hither. All right. You're, you know? so, you're so keyed I wanna, into I wanna get, life spirit. Yeah, it's the moment right before Jack says, like, relax your face. Yeah. He's catching me at my least relaxed. Yeah. I'm stressed out. I'm like, oh, fuck God. Oh, my God. <laughs> um, uh, I want to get back to Emily's point because it is very true. They do not eat dinner. They don't eat dinner. Uh, okay, but can I... The, this ma- happens. And, and also, at this point... 100 comedy points to Ben. Go on. Okay, okay, great. Uh, at this point, uh, because it is the last night of the Titanic... <laughs> Yep. You can start to count down hours pretty, like, sure, like, yeah. like realistically. And so it's like, oh, how do they have time to do all this stuff before the, they hit the iceberg? Well, they didn't go to dinner. Mm-hmm. They skipped out on that, and they skipped out on all that important nourishment. Um, I was going to say, can you imagine running around that ship on an empty stomach? Running around later on thing. an empty stomach. They, they, like, are trudging through water. Yeah. They're climbing up the ship. Yeah. Like, they must be so hungry. Axing handcuffs. Wouldn't it be? And yeah. It's like the thing, you know, the famous thing about the, the, the cook who survived even though he went into the water because he was drunk. Uh, oh, so he and was, like, warmed up? He was warmed Is up. Is he supposed he was... to be the guy who's at the top of the ship with him at the end? I who kind of looks flash. like Chef Boyardee? Yeah. 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 He's and so that was like the 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 I don't know if it's that much of an urban legend or if it's real, but that was supposed to be like I'm looking at the final meal that they missed out on. Guys, do you want to hear? Yeah, oysters on the half shell. Okay, you had two soups, uh, and like a nice beef, bouillabaisse. A beef soup, a yeah, beef and us and a a barley cream cream of barley soup, huh. a cold asparagus salad. Ugh. God, all the food looks so bad. Filet mignon. Okay. Uh, with chicken. Uh, what? Where? In relation to the flag? Like Inside? The- Next to. Uh, <laughs> so it's like a turf and turf? Yeah, I guess so. Uh, and then lamb with mint sauce or duck with applesauce. Th- three or, meats? Yeah. Or sirloin of beef with red wine. Get the fuck out of here. And then some kind of uh, punch. Oh, it looks like a sherbet or something. Yeah, I this was a, a palate, palate cleanser. cleanser. Then roasted squab. What? Then poached then salmon. salmon. Then pate, which you would kind of think earlier, Wait, but I guess early. back then they did. And then something called Waldorf pudding, which is uh, raisins and apples. That's so much stuff. I would have just gone back they to would've... my room, eaten a cliff bar. Even second class had a decent dinner. Um. Anyway. Okay, so they missed out on all that, and I think that's very key. Um, <laughs> that also is like why they had so much time, why yeah. everybody was distracted. Right. That's why they have time to propose a nude sketch, do the nude sketch. Have sex in their car, yeah. like do all this stuff, right? And they had about one meal's worth of sex, I would say. I was trying to time it when I was watching it this time, but I was they like, that's about three courses. So hard, yeah. That's dessert included, I think. Yeah. So you, uh, you, yeah, sure, go ahead. So anyway, that's my doing, theory. Ben? That's my new observation. I'm oh, good. <laughs> well, I am always kind Did, of conscious of like in movies when people don't, don't really eat, do a lot. Right. Of Absolutely, yeah, or eat. like how Jack never went to the bathroom on 24, and it started to get like kind of <laughs> alarming. <laughs> He's just really constipated. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, he takes a modium at the beginning of every day. Uh, I just want to point out, Ben walked into this room, handed me the picture, put, put on, on headphones, headphones, and then grabbed Katie Rich's book and just read through it for like five minutes. Well, it's interesting. Are you going to stick with it. us, Ben? Our levels well, are good? I, everything's good. Okay. I I just wanted to give the drawing. Oh, of course. And then I'll come back because I have stuff to talk about when it comes to the band. Okay. All oh, right. Okay, so Ben's leaving. We're a little head. Anyway, that's just a fun thing. You sound a little drunk, Ben. I'm getting sick. 
Yeah. <laughs> That's it. <laughs> that that is it. Uh, wow. All right. So Bye. let's talk about the drawing scene, right? Yeah. yeah. I want you to draw me one, like one of your French girls. Yeah. I can't remember if I asked you this on the podcast or, or off the podcast, but is this the last uh, PG-13 movie to have boobs in it? Yeah. I have no idea. I oh, can't. something's got to give. There's, it's a time limit. Oh, really? yeah. Yeah, something's got to give. Uh, there's you a, can, a like, second. show, like, three seconds yes. or whatever. And it has yeah. to be it's non-erotic? Brief. It's considered brief nudity. Yeah, it can, right. you can, like, have, like, a flash, but you can't have, like, nudity in sex. Right. right? It has to be a non-erotic context. And also, it's interesting that, like, most of the shots of her naked, you only can see one out of the two boobs, which I wonder if that was some kind of thing. Right. With it's, the like, way partial it's brief nudity. Right. Yeah. Instead of, uh, yeah, instead of anything that could be called partial frontal I, I don't know I remember like uh, like amongst the boys in my grade at the time that made this movie a big deal because right. it was like when it's you, the PG-13 this, movie oh, where you yeah. can see I one mean, boob this was certainly the first film I saw in a cinema with nudity in it I can't I can't think of it not, right I don't know if this is true Fifth for Element? you guys. oh yeah but I didn't see that in theater oh okay mm, uh, something has got to give is the only one I can think of um, when you google this Mostly, it's uh, f- fearful parents trying yeah. to make sure their kids don't see boobs. I uh, mean, who who could imagine? Yeah. Uh, anyway, but uh, what do we think of the drawing scene, guys? Okay. A fairly iconic scene. That's fine. I like the way the well, score drops out and it becomes the piano. Yeah. I want to. I want to say I think that it is pretty progressive on the part of of Jimmy C to uh, do a. Uh, I think. Well, no, wait. Yeah, Terminator was R. Yeah. Yeah. Oh yeah. So oh, like, yeah. this I, is, I, I believe, his first. Is True Lies a PG thirteen? I want to say that's R, but maybe I'm wrong. I about think that. nowadays you oh, would okay. have a movie like Terminator Two mm-hmm. uh, or Term or First Terminator that was very action oriented, lots of violence, lots no, of shooting it was an and R. stuff, oh, and that oh. would be the thing that you could sneak into PG thirteen. But sure. something like Titanic that has a, a sex scene and it has a nude scene and everything, that would be the thing that got bumped to R. Uh huh. I think it's good and interesting that the thing that maybe like i I don't know it's just like demonizing violence over sex right he did the opposite he did the maybe correct progressive which i think is good yeah yeah um according to what i'm reading there are some of the later movies to have had uh breasts in them supernova uh with robin tunney okay uh and across the universe has some oh yeah yeah, those are PG thirteens. Yeah, that's also a similar movie where you only see one boob. One another movie which I remember seeing with nudity. In it, yeah. Fifth Element's a good one. Is also um, uh, Nell. Oh yeah, which also mm. has kind of non sexual nudity. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I'll tell you the the someone has got to give one always kind of like bum me out because it felt like they gave it a PG thirteen seven R because she was old. Like it always felt like the kind of like implication. Oh sure, was that like, it was like non threatening. It's non sexual because she's an older yeah. lady. I get you. Because that seems like a little more like prolonged and pronounced. But it's again, it's it's, it's a goofy it's, scene. It's brief and they cut. Yeah, and, and she whatever. goes. Ooh. <laughs> yeah. So I don't. know. Did this scene have a huge impact on people? I almost feel yes. like it's yeah. Okay. Yeah. Hi, Emily. Oh, yeah. Definitely. Hi. Yeah. Sorry, my lips are super crappy. No, it's, it's understandable. Because um, I definitely, I guess I was, I don't remember coming out of there being, thinking like, top five moments. Number one, like, make a drawing. Yeah. Well, it was, it was a thing that was like, I mean, I remember very clearly there was an article in like the news paper the local the newspaper. newspaper the newspaper wow. the newspaper mm, i mm. and that was about like oh is like titanic is very popular among tweens but is it too raunchy for sure them? sure and so there was like this cartoon of like it was like i remember it was like leonardo dicaprio with a bar of soap in his mouth and it was like bubbling and oh then like what? and then like kate winslet like like but like the clouds of smoke from the smokestacks of the Titanic were like covering her. Sure. And it was Boy. like, and it was like, oh, this this is the raunchy new movie all the kids are into. And it was like, okay. I mean, it was for sure the first time I ever saw nudity. Yeah, I think so, for sure. I, I, I don't even think in like a home rental or whatever. I'd seen nudity, but I'd seen yes. rated R movies, but not ones with uh, not ones with nudity in them. See, I think yeah. my first was Shakespeare in Love the following year. Sure. And I remember that being a big deal where it was like, oh, my God, I'm going to get to see a movie with nudity because it's about Shakespeare. Well, right. Like, well, that felt like a And coup. that's the movie that is kind of ridiculous um, because that it's rated R. It's only rated R because you see yeah. – because of the nudity. There's no real swearing or right. anything right. else in the movie that's and it's, particularly objectionable. It's in like a prelude to a sex scene. It's like the scene of them undressing, but they, there's not actually a scene of them having sex, you know? Mm, As so, I remember I it, I have is, not seen it since that day. I don't right. think – yeah. 
Because she's unbinding. Yeah, I that's remember that. Cool I remember scene. the unbinding. You see her n- naked more. I remember uh, the unbinding, more. and then I remember her waking up in bed next to him. No, but in between, you cut to Imelda Staunton sitting outside. Remember? Oh yeah. Is that she's all freaked out because she's yeah. like, oh, this oh, isn't good. Yeah. yeah. Uh. Anyway, Titanic. Oh right, Titanic. Titanic. P- podcastic. So she's. I mean, as she, I. I, I I, and also, we should note the movie's one f bomb is spoken by uh, Beardo. Right, it's like I a like. total yeah. throwaway. He's got the you know thing in his fucking hands. I'm sorry, uh, his, his hands. hands. Yeah. It's just totally just what we just did with Charlie. Where he's her. mad at Ismay for wanting to go fast. That's when he's. That is a good. I mean, I give Jim two comedy points for the drawing scene, and then it cuts back to everyone. Like it fades from oh, her it's eyes. It's a great cut back to old Gloria. Yeah, Foster's you morph eyes. her eye into wrinkle eye. Oh yeah, eye. Right. it's not just a fade too. It's like an actual. It's a it's morph. A morph. It's, it's a. Yeah. Transform, yeah. and then it cuts to all of them on the edge of their seats. And they're just like this. Yeah. You know, they've got their uh, chins in their palms. And, and then they're like, so, I mean, am I, did you... Uh, and she's like, no, he was a gentleman. Jack was a perfect gentleman, always. And then we went into a car and we fucked <laughs> so hard that it steamed <laughs> we, up the window. We went five decks down yeah. <laughs> into the cargo area, which must have been freezing. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I was thinking about that. So maybe that's where all the maybe steam comes from. that's why the steam, because even just a relative amount of I don't heat. think it would take that much to steam up a car, even if it wasn't cold. But when they cut inside, they're so <laughs> sweaty, too. <laughs> Emily, yeah. we're, we're, I just said that with such definitive, we're just going to move right through that. Um, no, I want to talk about the car, though. That's my other thing I text. I've, I've yes. been texting really annoyingly to, 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 to it, David. That's crazy. I, I, I love texting with Emily, my good pal. <laughs> um, I think... Maybe Cameron is trying to infer mm-hmm. that they are the first teens to have sex in a car. Fuck in a car. I mean, how oh, old great is Great American oh, I tradition. I love that. I mean, like, oh, when is the car Jim. invented? Like, eight years earlier? Like, yeah. maybe, like, They were still figuring out things he could do in it. <laughs> yep. Oh, yep. Oh, I mean, Emily. it's like the first time both of them probably Four ever years. came in contact oh. with a car. I think she rode oh, in God. on a car. That's true. But when would she have had an opportunity? Yeah. Like to, to bang in a car. She's a yeah. seventeen year old, yeah. uh, you know, yes. woman of uh, high birth. One, yeah. one doubts she has. Actually, this is a great point. Is that like the the having sex in cars culture becomes a thing when teenagers are allowed to drive by themselves. Yes. Like, oh, it's like the rebel without a cause right. days. Yeah, whether you have your own car, or you're able to take out your parents' yeah. car. Back then, like a car was such a prime piece no. of property. Yeah, and, and like a guy needed to like walk in front of it with a flag or whatever. Right, right? like it was like completely yeah. <laughs> right. Like even if your parents <laughs> had a car, you couldn't be like, "Hey, can I take it out for a quick spin?" Well, yeah, because yeah. we have to call the mayor. To we have to tell him you're going to take it out. Oh wait, I want to look up the car because the car is real. That's a real thing. There was sure. one car on board. I, you can go into the car and turn on the lights in Titanic yeah. Adventure out of time. That's pretty cool, uh, and it's yeah. also he, real. It's real that when they found the car on the bottom of the ocean, it was filled with. Come, <laughs> everyone! Griffin, the car. Griffin, it's not good. Even it's... the ocean couldn't wipe out that, the cum. I, I want to say just to talk right over that. Uh, you, I like car. I like that he shows you the car being loaded on at the beginning of the movie. Yeah. You see it on the crane. Yeah, I know you're trying to think. And about then they it. cut to a guy going, oh, "I should sure do hope no cum gets in that car." <laughs> all right, all right. I just cool. upholstered it. Well. Again, I should say, Emily really started this all off by talking about Rose's STDs. Thank you. I wasn't the dirty <laughs> boy for once. <laughs> no, okay. For once, right. I wasn't a little stinker. Now, I will say, when I was a teenager, yeah. I was someone who was fairly unabashedly into the movie, even though it was very uncool for me to be into the movie, uh-huh. certainly among most of the people I knew. Certainly among the boys I knew, I guess. Okay. Not to be binary about this, but, you know, teenagers are often binary it's, it's without real. even... Yeah. 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 And um, McDonald's boys get Hot Wheels and girls get Barbies. Sure. Um... That's but, what McDonald's uh, were. Even I could McDonald's not. McDonald's goes, so goes the nation. All right, Griffin. Even I, at like age 14, could not take it on board, uh, the sex scene. I thought it was so stupid. Like, and I didn't even know what what was supposed to happen in there. Yeah. But like the shot of her putting her hand up it's on the really glass. It's really silly. I was like, wait, what are the logistics? Why would she put her hand up on the like? I'm. It's so dramatic. <laughs> no, I it's don't so know. dramatic. And then when they cut inside, they're both sweating so they're, they're much. Like they like they they're don't have the car. It's closed. I know. It's closed. It like, is there's closed. No, there's no and, AC. And yeah. also, there's no AC. And also, that is leather. Like, yeah. You know, that's a warm. Okay. So, you know. Yeah, maybe crack a window. Be I'm cool. telling you, he gets really damp in this movie. It's a damp. <laughs> that's when it he was, starts getting wet. Is that? Scene. It would just be funny if then we saw Kate Winslet like getting up, and we just heard like, <laughs> and she like oh, lifted gross. from the leather. Oh. <laughs> Um. Yeah. No. I. Th- I think that was widely parodied. Right. Also, that was very widely hand. parodied, and it was. Yeah. yeah. Also, but also, just like 
I mean, the thing that I do like that is sort of realistic about this is just the put your hands on me, Chad. Oh, yeah. And he and, and you know what he does? He grabs he goes her boob. Yeah, he goes straight for <laughs> the boob. Which he's fucking he's he's 17 like, years old. Yeah. What else no, is he supposed of course. to do? Yeah. That, that's feels actually, very young. Yes, it's yeah. a well-observed yeah. moment. Yeah. Um, I do she think- basically takes his hand and puts it on her boob. Yeah. yeah like, yeah, you know. Yeah. It's like, ugh, um, come on, Jack. The, the, here, on the boob. <laughs> This is what I meant. Don't touch you my nose. You literally drew this in charcoal. Yeah, right. Come on, Jack. Why, why are you rubbing my ear? Hand on boob, please. Um, I do think it's interesting that like the the hand on the window uh, moment mm-hmm. is sort of like a reappropriation of like a classic horror iconography. Yeah, yeah. Like, sure, that shot sure. is like the victim trying to get yeah, out and yeah. the blood on mm-hmm. the hand because it even has the and like sort of smearing yeah, of right. the fog on the window. Well, the funny thing is like it actually serves a plot purpose because that's what the guys searching for them then see. Right. They yeah. see the imprint. Which is why I think he did it, but it also is, like, I think there's sort of, because that is so coded in our minds of, like, that's the last thing the victim does when they're trying to get out is you see the hand running across the thing. But then they'd be looking for him for murder or something. Well, you know. (laughs) But I also think when the actual imprint is made, we as the audience, like, go, like, ooh, because it's, like, we've never seen that handprint had it be a good thing. Like, oh, looks like some killer sex going on there. (laughs) Or, like, someone's dying. All right. All right. But What, you don't want to talk about sex more? Uh, if I'm, that's not my problem. More like we gotta go okay. to the sinking of the ship. Iceberg. We gotta get to the iceberg. So, iceberg. so it so happens right is, after this. This yes, is the scene. Then. They come out on the deck, they're and, canoodling, and then these foolhardy guys. They're very the, cute. I like those guys. Yeah, yeah, they're like, oh, check it out. It's kissing. Hey, yeah. check it out. It's kissing. <laughs> <laughs> oh, and then they're like, he's like, oh, they sure look warmer than us. And he's like, well, yeah. that's what it takes to be warm. They're like, no homo over here. <laughs> yeah, up in the crow's God. nest. Yeah. <laughs> And then just like that, James Cameron's like, this is why you shouldn't be homophobic. That's the lesson. If these guys were a little more progressive, oh my God. they would have seen that iceberg. They spent 15 oh, minutes explaining boy. that they weren't gay and they missed the iceberg. That's my theory, Emily. You think but it's the reflection of the sky. I think it's the patriarchy and heteronormative behavior. All right. So uh, This they, is my favorite sequence in the movie. They hit the iceberg. Uh, which is the whole way he communicates, and it's kind of what Katie wanted us to talk about, mm-hmm. that way where it's like they see the iceberg, they ring. You cut down to the to the uh, deck where, it, I believe you mentioned it off mic, or did you mention it on, where he goes like, hello? And oh, yes. Like, iceberg right here. He's, He's like, like, thank, thank you. you. <laughs> it's great. Protocol. And then so that, you know, they go to full, and you see the end, you cut down yeah. to the, the, the turbine room, and you see that guy go to full and start, like, moving this shit. Then you cut down to the coal room, see them, like, putting the coal back in, and then you go back up, here's see the, the turbines moving. It's so perfect. But here's the thing. All this stuff could have been boring, even if it was shot really excitingly. Sure. Except at this point... We've spent some time on the ship, exactly. and we don't want it to it sink. Exactly. I hope. I hope. I want to know every We've single way. We've seen the might coal room. Yeah. We've yeah. seen the turbine That's room. That's a like, beautiful touch when they run through the coal room, and it's like yeah. you're not supposed to be down here when yeah. they're just yeah. trying to get away. And yeah. it's like yeah. at the time, it just feels like oh, here's another little slice of the thing. But it's like no, but later you're going to need to know the coal room. Mm-hmm. You're going to need to yeah. understand the layout just, of it. I think especially to a modern audience, the idea that the whole, the only way the fucking ship worked was that you had all these people in the bowels just shoveling yeah. coal. 24 hours a day, which yeah. is crazy. Yeah. yeah, They were well paid, too, but yeah. they, they would kill themselves all the time, the apparently. Yeah. It was, it was the it's a horrible job. Yeah. And, but then I just love that. And then, I mean, the fact that he built that real turbine room, and I assume like, some of it is embellished with CGI, but the sight of the oh, turbines God. like shuddering Trying to a halt to yeah. reverse. and then going backwards, just the idea of he really wants you to understand how they tried to avoid the yeah, sh- the ice well, and that's like you know this was the most expensive movie ever made at that point in time, and a lot of it was the sets and how yeah, big the sets yes. were. And there's some digital trickery in terms of expanding them a little bit. Well, and Victor Garber demanded forty million. And right, got that it. was a big thing. <laughs> yeah, and also asked them to CGI him. He was the first mocap performance. Yeah, totally a hologram. Yeah. Right. Uh, which was they just figured out David Morse. So this was right after context. So no, they I'm, could not, do. I'm not returning to that. bit. I'm returning to that bit. We have to return to Titanic. No. Um, but, uh, and, you know, there's some digital stitching together of, like, oh, here are two sets that we're going to make seamless into one thing, you know, mm-hmm. in the shot, the thing combines them, whatever. But um, Cameron has often said, like, today, if he made the movie, he wouldn't have built that much of the ship. He would have sure. made it digitally. Right. And it's just like, what a fucking loss this would be. Yeah. Like, you oh, look yeah. at these sets and they're That's unbelievable. That's what's so incredible. I mean, I mean, we'll get to it, but the, the boat breaking, it's a yeah. real oh, boat. Yeah. He built the real thing. They broke it. 
It's crazy. And it counts because the two hours leading up to that, you're like, God, this set's unbelievable. Right. So that when the boat breaks, you feel as bad about the yeah, set you're breaking. Like, oh, it's also pretty. <laughs> right. <laughs> it's like you just built this stuff. It's the, the paint. You can still smell the fresh paint. Oh, my all God. All this china. You had an art grip, an art PA, had to go out and buy all the china. All right. Yeah. Sorry, we're, fucked we're, up. I said art grip. I should have said RPA first. Um, Mangled. So, uh, so the boat starts sinking. It's this just is bad the, news. It's just bad news. It just it's, sucks. It's just so good. This it's part of the movie. Most visceral, muscular. I, kn- I know it's like hacky. Disaster filmmaking. Yeah, I, I know it's hacky to say that the last hour is the best hour of Titanic, and of course it God. wouldn't be like you guys point out yeah. if they hadn't built up the geography of the boat and like you the know, emotional stakes of everyone on the boat yeah. And, mm-hmm. yeah but i mean don't you guys like it oh Ooh, well yeah well i mean good, right? it's incredible <laughs> it's that weird foreboding thing where it's like oh the first class people are like oh i guess i, I guess they're making us put on our life jackets How oh weird. i love that yes. and meanwhile downstairs there's panic right, and total the rats chaos are running yeah. out yeah, like, yeah yeah well and this is you know it is very harrowing i mean this whole section of the movie because it's about when sort of like civility goes out the window mm-hmm. and you know these sort of like but, uh, structures are still there but it well, also, yeah, the idea survival. that the water literally takes the steerage first, though, right, yeah. is such a clear metaphor yeah. for what he's saying. It's, this is a movie that's metaphors are very broad and very clear, but that right. doesn't mean they're any less like. I don't uh, think you're act- supposed to say the word steerage anymore. Oh, wow. Sorry. <laughs> am I? Am I uh, you're supposed I, to say steerage American. <laughs> Uh, but they say steerage so much time in th- so many times yeah. in this movie. Yeah, it's like it's like because uh, it was it's meant to be uh, derogatory. Really? Yeah. Well, because you're like a cow. Yeah. Right. Oh. I just figured out what. That's steerage why Rose's means. mom is like, oh, how are how are the accommodations in steerage? Yeah, she's I mean, like, look, she's not being very nice. She's yeah. when she says that. Um, um, I was just gonna say this is like the section of the movie where really like the chips are down and you see how like ruthless people can be to each other you know if you remove like the the context of like polite society and all of that amongst classes and and it's like harrowing and there's one clip i asked ben to pull that for me like encapsulates like how scary this movie gets in sort of like a moral horror movie Mm -hmm. so ben could you play that clip (laughs) pow Someone said lock the gates. I just sank my ship. <laughs> Wait, somebody said lock the gates. You could hear it. I heard it. I didn't hear it. <laughs> Is that the bit you were setting up? Pow! <laughs> so who were your ships growing up? <laughs> what were you, the Queen Victoria? What were you? <laughs> QE2. Yeah. I used to work the door at the QE2. <laughs> uh, great job. God, thank, thank you, you. Griffin. I thank did a lot you. of setup on that bit. Ben and I had to go through, find <laughs> the was... clip. Earmark it, convert it. That was fantastic. Pow! A lot of gates being locked. We should yeah. note. And a lot of drama in the last chunk of this movie uh, stems from trying to unlock the gates, which is hard. <laughs> which is hard to do. Much harder than locking the gates. Uh, you, need but- a team. you need a lot of guys. Yeah. <laughs> Lock the gates! <laughs> it, is, it is amazing how many action scenes he gets out of a boat sinking you oh, know what i mean because yeah. the yeah. movie is just like now it's just small set piece after small set piece like they're going all, around the ship like diamond cut you yeah because like, like perfect. they're i'm yeah. trying to think of something even obviously just even just trying to when she goes to find jack and she has to chop him out of his his that. Yeah. handcuffs it's, that is in, in its own like that's just like a weird piece such of cringy tension good like it, small scale little intimate like struggle and then it also the, sets them back on the clock so right. now they have yeah. like you know they're up against but it's also it has that brilliant detail of uh him being like take a practice swing and she hits it. he's yeah, like take yeah. another one <laughs> she's way off and he's like yeah. all right let's, all right, just let's do, do it <laughs> hit the same spot and she misses yeah, yeah and right. there is that magic of like even though i remember in the theater still to this day i remember being kind of tense about that scene you know obviously you know she's not gonna hack his right. arm off right. that would be kind of amazing though i mean yeah, she, she could just, still like get yeah. out if she just like buried it in his shoulder <laughs> <laughs> that scene is always the one that makes me the most tense while watching this yeah, yeah. it's just so scene. contained like yeah. yeah and lovejoy's such a dick i love him sitting at the table and rolling the bullet down and being like, you know, I think this ship's gonna sink. Goddamn See you Spencer later. Love Punch. Then, I yeah, yeah. I mean, I just can't stop thinking through the, the entire last hour about how cold the water is. That is the thing 
that is like the unspoken <laughs> thing running throughout it that makes it tense. It's because you're just like, oh, it would feel like knives. Right. And like, there is feel horrible. that one great moment where because Jack hasn't been in the water yet because he's been handcuffed. And then yeah. he, she frees him and he gets in and he immediately goes, Jesus, that's cold. Yeah. Jesus. Yeah. Which is great. They also like the film shifts to like a very blue color palette yep. after mm-hmm. being like gold for and most of the movie. Kate and- Winslet's skin shifts to a very yes. blue color palette. Yeah. We should mention that Jim Cameron beat the shit out of her with this movie. I mean, like she was almost drowned. Like she almost got hypothermia. Can I say- All those shots of her being like swept along hallways like oh, yeah. by the water. Like they're- The chase scene in the, with, when it's flooding in the hallway and it's up to like a foot from the yes. ceiling. That is like my nightmare. Ooh, that, that's God. bad. Yeah. Can I say something really creepy? Oh. And every time I watch this movie, I have oh, the same God. thought, and I'm like, oh, fuck. What? I My crush on Kate Winslet grows the more hypothermic she gets oh, in this that's movie. that's bizarre. It, right? That's strange. That is weird, right? Mm, yes. Like, the more, like, cold and pale. Well, I, I mean, mean, the more she looks like she's in, like, a Nine Inch Nails music video. <laughs> that's, like, yes, that's, that's the that's thing. It's very, very yeah. 90s It is appropriate. very 90s. Right. She does get more 90s and goth. Yeah. Uh, and sort of waifish and, yeah. 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 Okay, well, well good for we you. have that out of the way. That's yep. now on the record. Ben is oh, storming banging. around. Oh, he's oh. walking back in. Okay, Ben. <laughs> Walks in with a sigh yeah, immediately. Like a with hunchback. A heavy sigh. Uh, okay. What do you want to talk about, Ben? Are you here? talk about the band. Okay, talk about the band. Uh, so we're at that part, and yeah. I, I want to just add my two cents. So I I've, love I've, the band. The I'll band is the, the band. only thing that makes me cry now. Oh, really? It really works for me, too. So yeah. do you not like the band? I that was like the thing that I was always like I would get caught up thinking about it. I was right. a band kid, right? Yeah. And I was like, well, I, what was your instrument? It's a quartet. It's not a band. It's a, well, it's wow. a string quartet. I, you guys have a, a real rivalry. Level. Yeah, <laughs> on a macro wow. level, it's, it's violin. It's so, violinists. Uh, is it and just violinists? <laughs> and there's a cellist. Quartet. It's a string yeah, quartet. Yeah. Two, two violinists, a viola, and a cello. Right. Right. Was there not a French horn? No. <laughs> <laughs> what was your <laughs> instrument? Be so horrible. If you're like crying <laughs> for your life. <laughs> And then this French horn, this mournful French horn pierces Whoa. through the night air. There's <laughs> just Whoa. one guy with a tuba who just goes straight to the bottom. Uh, all right, all right. Well, what was your band? I want to know what your instrument was. Trumpet. In band. Oh, of course. Okay. Yeah. All right, so you were obsessed with the, the quartet. Well, I just... I would play always songs like, that they were supposedly playing. On I get the, the captain yeah. going down with the ship. Sure. I get the poor people sinking with the ship. <laughs> yeah, fuck sure. Who cares? All that shit makes sense to me. Right. If you're in the fucking bands, all right, like, you don't get paid that much. Yeah. Like, all right, sure, you're the captain, second in charge. You're a fucking uh, second or fourth chair violin player. You're telling me to be like, well, I love music and I'm going to die <laughs> in a cold grave. <laughs> Fuck that shit. And the worst part is they had just signed a record deal. When <laughs> they got back true. to America, they had a 15-album deal. They did. Interscope. That is true. It's so I, I broke Island the, Def Jam. I broke the momentum of this. So thing. we're at an hour and well, twenty minutes. Well, <laughs> when, but I will say, I mean, I'm glad you brought it up, even though we're a little ahead of it. But I will say, <laughs> <laughs> the line. Good shade. Good shade. Yeah. The, Emily and Ben are punching each other. I feel in like the Emily face and Ben had an awkward interaction in Speed Racers. Well, I like it. I like the rivalry. What? Yeah. Really? I think so. I can't remember. No. Maybe not. I don't know. Well, I anytime think so. you're here, Emily, I can't talk on the mic. What? Oh, because every time I'm here, there's four people here. We've well, never next actually. Time no, no, you were the only on, on podcast reawakened. Podcast reawakened. How about this? Yeah. Maybe because I get to pick a movie. Okay. Do you want to be my guest? I never get to bring a guest. Yeah, All sure. Right. You're inviting Emily to be on the next Ben's Choice. It's a yeah. good call. I want to oh. know. The, I'm, I actually am looking forward to this because I'm pretty sure whatever you pick is a movie I haven't seen, so I'll have to watch it for the yeah. first time because I have not seen Fletch and I hadn't seen what was the other one. Under Siege to Dark Territory. Yes, I hadn't seen that. But if you do The Man Who Knew Too Little, I do know that movie. And oh, I would, hell yeah. I would definitely watch so it. So for the listener at home, it seems like the potential fight is dissipated. Bruiser Yoshida is rolling her sleeves back <laughs> down. <laughs> ben has removed his brass knuckles. It yeah, seems the fight has been put off for but, one more day. Emily, wait. But, you but wanted I wanted to, say, to say that I think the thing that makes me, like, at least misty in that scene is just the, is the, uh, like, whatever he says, the, 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 the violinist. The gentleman, it's been a gentleman, pleasure. Gentleman, it's been a pleasure. Like, like, oh, man. Yeah. Like, that's, I that's think, like life. That's that, great. That I think that's great. And then, of course, they play near, oh, my God, to the, and, like, you get the montage yeah. of all the victims. Oh, and they all get come here, back. Ben. I would have like been split like, up. gentlemen's been a pleasure. Drop violin. <laughs> Jump into lifeboat. To lifeboat. Well, no, the thing is they're all walking away, and then 
And then he starts to play by himself. Oh, this is the other thing. This gets me in anything when somebody starts playing something musically and then other people walk up and start joining in. That, no matter the context, almost always gets me yeah. in my heart. The end of a battle. My boy. heart muscle. When Hugh Grant comes on stage and plays Killing Him Softly with Nicholas Holt, it's a good scene. Oh, I don't even remember that. Oh, I was good. thinking of that. So the, the interesting... The interesting <laughs> Sorry. No, it's fine. <laughs> Apology accepted. Just, I, I'm just bruising with my... Oh, God, she just punched me. This is a really table. good drawing, though. It's a really nice good drawing. We'll post... I mean, we just shouldn't talk about it too much because the listeners at home can't see it right now. Ben's okay. looking at it and shaking his head in disbelief. So, so there are many little vignettes <laughs> and drawing. scenes as as the movie is... Uh, as, as, as as the ship is be, is filling up with water. Besides right. beside the main conflict of, of, of Kate and Leo trying to get up. I'm sorry, guys. Ben, get out of here. <laughs> get out of here. Ben, ben Scarlet would laugh there. He is. It's good. <laughs> He's really proud of his drawing. <laughs> I look like a real goofus. A naked it. goofus. Yeah, you got to put this online. You I think do. it should go oh, yeah. in yeah. a frame. Yeah. <laughs> um, oh, I, I also want to talk about the cult of the heart of the ocean also. Okay. What's by the end of it. Okay. Okay. Oh, so save it. Just okay. bookmark that. Um, the, uh, the thing that probably hits me the hardest is the Jack Old scene telling the bedtime story to her kids. It's a very small moment, but it's the kind of thing that triggers me, which is just Oof. like the deep dig if you like actually commit your mind to it of like, oh, she's trying to keep her kids calm and right. like put them to sleep one last time Before knowing they they're drown. never going to wake up. Right. Yeah. They're going to drown in their sleep. Yeah. That's horrifying. Yeah. That uh, sucks. That seems great. And um, Jeanette Goldstein kills it. Also, the two old people hugging themselves oh, yeah. as they go down. That's that's the real. That's the real. Just bring it out of you. Isadora and Ida, Ida yes. Strauss. Yes. Yeah. Of of Macy's. Of Macy's. Um, um, I think that really elevates this movie for me and how he handles this last chunk is like aside from like all the like sad shit like that. He also does a lot of like uh, having to stay stare like straight into the terror of death shit, mm-hmm. where it's like. Um, uh, I mean, a, a there's a recurring thing he keeps on doing, which I love, which is like while you're so invested in just like Jack and Rose, and are they going to survive? Um, and you know, what what are you gesturing towards? I, on on, the, on the internet, you Incredible. can see archives of every lifeboat and who was on them. It's oh, crazy. Boy, that's nuts. Yeah. Um, anyway, um, no, I was just gonna say that like you're so invested in Jack and Rose making it, and yes. you're like focusing just on their survival, and then he'll keep on cutting to. Rose make direct eye contact with another person right yeah. before they die. Uh, oh, it's, yeah. So you're just like, we know the movie's focusing on these two, but all of these people are dying, yeah. not just like the f- faint figures in the background. No, and he's good at making you feel all the little like yeah. things and weird. Yeah, I mean, and then of course, like Fabrizio yes. gets uh, eats it when they uh, fucking, what's it called? Smokestack thingy. Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, lands on him, and um, Tommy gets shot by Murdoch, who's your yes. himself. Like, There's that moment I love. Where All the secondary characters start to die. It's like the save the cat moment, which is like, oh, this guy's the hero. They're running through the halls. They see the little boy. He's crying. Oh, that's they take him great. with him. Yeah, 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 yeah. And then the father comes and he's like, what the fuck are you doing stealing There's my kid? But multiple in Italian. interactions, right, with uh, uh, people who don't speak English and who sort of just yell randomly at them at, right. uh, in like, town. They were trying Russian. to do the right thing. They don't yeah. have time to explain themselves right. because now the door's breaking. And then he runs in the wrong direction yeah. and they're like, don't go there. And he just fucking, they get flooded. They just yeah, have to keep out. on yeah. seeing all these horrific right. things around them. And I think that is another thing that makes rose both grown rose or old rose and rose that we know mm-hmm. more of a character is that we see things through her i would yeah. say that we are seeing all that through her perspective i, agree. I would totally agree the movie yeah. is never yeah. really through yeah. jack's perspective yeah. the movie's always on rose yeah and, and so yeah. she is not just a person who falls in love or feels things she's a person who sees things yes and is an observer of the yeah, world absolutely. and that makes her so much more of an yeah. interesting person to follow. and it is that pattern he doesn't ever do it with jack it's close up yeah. of rose's mm-hmm. face you see her looking off to something Cut to someone else's face in close up. Here's a new She's victim we haven't sponge. seen before, yeah. mm-hmm. and then they fall out of frame. They cut to her, yeah, and very and, quickly having to process. And her that. her um, interactions with Andrews, who's great. Well, oh you, my god, you quoted him yes. at the beginning. You know that line. He that says, scene though, when the the whole lounge is is sideways, is sideways. Yeah. Oh, oh my so good. god. But also before when he sees her on the staircase and he's like, the ship's really going down. Put on a life jacket. Like yeah. this is it. You remember yeah. that conversation we had about the lifeboat? Yeah. Because yeah. she noticed right. earlier in the film. Yeah. Not enough. She people. takes count. And he kind of takes a liking to her. I can't believe I haven't talked about Andrews more because he's my favorite oh, character. Oh, he's so good. But, but he kind of takes a liking to her because he notices that she's sort of of a similar mind to him, a detail-oriented sort of humanist mind. Mm-hmm. And you can tell that he's already, like, every time anything suggests, I mean, the way he talks about the weight of, like, they said that the deck would be too cluttered with too many lifeboats. Like, he knew that wasn't a good yeah. idea. 
when Ismail is uh, Ismail is pushing to make the the boat faster so they can get their headline yeah. and get there earlier. All this shit, he's just like, this is bad news. Right. Mm-hmm. I mean, like, well, Victor Gargaba comes into this movie and you feel like there's already been a movie before this about the, like, tortured right. ship Creation of, the, of yes. the Titanic. Who's been yeah. ground down by all of these opposing forces and yeah. has to make the ship that he doesn't really believe in but is still going to bring him all this, like, fame and stuff. And now he's on the freaking ship and it's like... He, I'm, gra- I'm glad you guys are so excited. Like, right, and he I, sells I hate that the world scene, now. Right, where, where <laughs> she's like, not enough light posts. He's like, yeah, actually, it's... you know, I thought we should have a few more, but they said it would clutter the deck. Yeah. And, like, he just seems pleasant about it, but he's very good at playing that inner, yeah. like, like, kind of screen. Like, so strange. much stuff has happened yes. before that. And, yeah. and the o- other moment is... And, and he then when he cracks, of course, it is right. man says she's made of iron shirt. And yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And he doesn't tip his hat too heavily in terms of, like, foreshadowing with right. those scenes and his line readings, which are just, like, you know, filled with so much pathos without ever feeling manipulative. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, but it also is, I love this thing that she, he takes this kind of, like, shine to her in that moment because it's like, you fucking notice. So then later he's like, I'm going to give you the hot tip. Like, yeah. the ship's going down. Because she says, I can see it. I can see it in the people running and I can see it in your eyes. Tell me what's actually happening. Right. And he's like, you got an hour tops. Yeah. Like, you remember a conversation about the lifeboat? No, I know. Get you, a fucking life jacket. Get out of here. But then, And then the scene, the shot of him changing the clock. Oh, you know, turning great. back time. I love that. I love that. But it also, it's such an interesting story choice because it's like Rose has more information than any other passenger. Yeah. So everything she's doing, sure. the decision to jump off the boat, all of this, like she knows better than anyone else who isn't working on the ship. Yeah. And even most of the people who no, are no, working on right, the ship. No, no, you're right. You're right. Um, it, it becomes a very active set of choices. <sighs> I love this movie. Priorities yeah. are, are established yeah. within her mind. But yeah, she jumps, yeah. you jump by a jump jack. She jumps off the lifeboat. A little annoying, Rose. Come on. Yeah, Cal tries to make the fucking deal with all the money and get on the boat. And yeah, he's he has an arrangement her. with Murdoch. Right. Yeah. And then, uh, you know, he's like, well, uh, go, Rose. Uh, the, we have a separate arrangement. Jack and I will get on that. And then there's like, you're a good liar, almost as good as you. That I like that conversation. Yeah. <laughs> Where it's like, oh, fuck. No, I like that moment, yeah, where he hates them. Yeah. And they left him the nude painting. Like, they've really rubbed it in his face. Yeah. Yeah. And he and Jack still have that sort of cordial moment where they're trying to rescue her. They got one thing in common, which is they both like this lady. You know? So there's, like, this one moment of bonding. But then, right, then she jumps off, and then he flips out and starts shooting at them. Right. 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 Yeah, right. Right. And that's when he put the coat on her. Mm -hmm. Yes. Put put the coat on the girl. No, I put put the the diamond in the jacket. I put the diamond in the coat. I put the coat on her. Lovejoy doesn't care. I lo- that's what I love about Lovejoy. He's laughing. Zane's laughing. He's getting zany. Um, um, I also like that love the moment when they don't get on the boat, Murdoch's boat, yeah. the first time, and instead he goes after Rose again, and Lovejoy's like, fuck, we're, we're, this we're is doomed. Because yeah. then when he comes back later, he's like, what about the money? And he's like, your money can't help me. It, it, yeah. it matters even less. It's, fuck money. Um, the one moment I, I sort of uh, allude to earlier where the special effects don't hold up for me is there's one shot. I think it's after the father and the kid get knocked out by the water through the door and Jack and Rose are running away and it's a slow motion run. Yeah, that's a, yeah. And, and with, the, with the strobe are lights. clearly CGI'd on to Double's bodies. Oh, oh yeah. really? Yeah, their faces look like weird CGI. They look like <laughs> jib jab masks. <laughs> like it's like the body is animated as one thing and then there's just like the face that doesn't really move on top of it. Mm, it's an art. I think they do the strobe lights to sort of hide it, hmm. but it looks very weird if you watch it in high def. Wow. I don't remember thinking it looked that weird, but anyway. I'll say when I saw it, I mean, I think maybe now I look out for it more because of this, but when I saw it in theaters in 3D, it stood out so much that the entire audience laughed. <sighs> sure. So now I think I know huh. I think they it. were also laughing because that scene is in slow motion and thus is kind of dorky and with the strobe lights going off as well. Yeah. Well, but the entire audience in unison went, oh, shoddy CGI. <laughs> I love when they're in the boat, when they're in the bowels of the boat, especially the noises the ship makes. Yes. Yeah. The, the, the weird groanings. Yeah. Oh, that's yeah. Stuff. The and sound work, that, that is a, one of those very, very deserved sound, uh, oh, sound Oscars. Absolutely. And I remember they yeah. did it that year at the and Oscars. he's communicating to you this thing's going to break. Yeah. Like, yeah. You know, and that's why when it breaks, you get it. Um, that year at the Oscars, Chris Rock presented the sound categories. And he was like, here's why sound's important. And this is like what a scene would be like with the wrong sound. And it was when the ship is like going straight up and people are falling off. And they like played that clip and the sound was someone going like, ah, no, it hurts. Right. right. Stuff like that, which I saw that before I ever saw the movie. So now I keep on imagining those voices. There's that brutal fucking moment. I think that was the moment where he he overlapped this, where the guy falls off. He's holding on the smokestack. He falls off and hits the fan. Yeah. And it's like, 
I mean, imagine, okay, so you're like holding on, then you hit something. We get it. Broken bones, <laughs> then you're in the water, freezing cold, then you're going to drown. It's bad. It's like a reverse a lot of bad, A lot of bad death. The yeah. ship breaks. Yeah, ship breaks. <sighs> and, like makes a big wave. Uh, yeah, the ass goes up in the air. It, at this point, the movie just becomes like a ride. It becomes yes, like a thrill. very much so. Um, a good ride. Except all Jack the people seems, jumping off. It's Jack, right. Yeah, the people jumping off it, which is very, very scary. And then the well, sight of the boat. Well, and it has also aged more. Strangely, yeah. yes. Yes. Um, <laughs> uh, but that shot of the boat going into the water with all the people in the water already is yeah. really oh, yeah. alarming. But then I do, I mean, Joanna said this when we were watching. She was like, Jack seems to know exactly the best way to survive. Yeah. He's like, we oh, got to yeah. get right to the front. <laughs> like, yeah. Don't worry. I've been on a bunch of Titanics <laughs> yeah, before. Yeah. I know how this works. <laughs> and they somehow make it right to the top. And but then that's that sound is the scariest to me when they make it to the top. All the music is cut out. The ship is gone. Right, the, and all you hear is people screaming. Yeah. Yeah. Which is and horrifying. It is, it is. You're right. And I mean, this is, I think, why is especially seeing in a theater when I was a teenager, not even 11 years old. It was so overwhelming. And fantastic yeah. and i loved it yeah and uh we get like there are two amazing lifeboat moments there's the francis fisher shot where you so see many her, amazing lifeboat moments but there's a speechless moment yeah. where you see her looking and watching all the people jumping out of the boat and dying and she gets it for the first time right. like, she gets humanity right. for the first yeah, time yeah. yeah that's true and she she sells it she sells it. and then molly freaks out at them later that's for not yeah. though your men out moment. there yeah yeah which is a great line yeah as as corny as it sounds and yeah. we've already like up until that point like i mean you know there's this running thing with cameron that he hates like corporations you know he hates he companies does. and all yeah. of this and these like large cyber nine these institutions that dehumanize people and view them as a mass and don't think about the individual and yeah. all of that right yeah. and you have the bit of that where it's like they're just not fucking like prepped for this and they don't know what they're doing and like getting the when when uh uh fucking um uh victor garber grabs the guy and is like why are you sending those lifeboats yeah. out there? they're like half full i thought they they might buckle and there's no, not even there was an a concern about the weight and he's like lower class is dying out there like he you're did. not even fucking lock the gates on them mark maron's call <laughs> he, he, he doesn't wants say to any sue of us mark maron is sending a telegram to them yeah. but they don't get it yeah ding 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 <laughs> 10 comedy points back. i can't i still can't even hear them say lock, lock the gates, the gates. Oh my god! So uh, uh, I mean, so that but but uh, but Molly does stage like the the um, kind of mutiny on the yeah. lifeboat, and she gets all the ladies to go back and if you don't shut that hole in your face, yeah, that's what the guy says to her. No one stands with her. Everyone just wants to survive. Because don't you have husbands? Your men are on that ship. They're in that water right now. Everyone just stays quiet. Yeah, I mean, she's not been popular up to that point. New, she's money. new money, new money. They didn't like that story about putting the money in the stove and then him lighting a fire. Right. I found it charming. <laughs> um, so uh, yeah. then then Jack but and Rose are just hanging out and he puts her on the door, which is very controversial. Yeah, I was going to say, is this maybe the most mocked part of Titanic? I, I the icicles the and I'll never let you go after the flying. Dissected, argued. Not mocked as much as just like it's pulled apart. This. Well, also... He's very bad in this scene, I would say. Uh, yeah, he is. He's very yeah. bad in I it. agree with that. I think uh, the movie had probably completely ground them down at this point yeah. as well. Yeah, I mean, I mean when you said that thing about, like, um, how... Dampness? Dampness, yes. <laughs> but no, but also just how when you watch this movie, you keep on thinking about how cold the water is, which mm -hmm. I think this movie does a really good job of. I also just think about, like, even for the actors. Mm -hmm. Like, it's cold in both circumstances. Yeah. Like, you're like, this looks shitty for the characters, and this couldn't have been easy to film. Yeah. So you feel the real stakes of it. Even you, if we yeah. know, like, I think it was, like, lukewarm water the whole time. Like but you're still you're in water all yeah. day. Your feet feel disgusting. Right. Like, ugh. Yeah. No, yeah, being in the water all yeah, it's yeah. Terrible. Yeah, I had to uh, do like an acting scene in a shower recently, and it was impossible. Like I just like couldn't do it. Sure, I'm also a bad actor, <laughs> but <laughs> well, there is something about my job. <laughs> there is something about Leo in this scene where it's just like I don't buy the shivering. I know it's I, too much, and also the frost and the yeah. the coloring and the the ch like yeah, he's it's everything he's is giving oversold. really corny lines too. Yeah, where well, it's that's like he's like. I know literally my life is leaving me. He's like, Rose, make sure you have a really great life. <laughs> yeah. It also is like like Winslet's really hitting her stride in this section of the movie. Like this is the part of the movie where she's just fucking killing it. Yeah. It's great. You know, where she becomes like sort of more of a strong silent type and she's just like you see her immediately being affected by everything she's just yeah. had to see. Survival's kicking in. You know, she wants to be with this yeah, guy. Yeah, well, she right. Jack's him. becoming a non-character in a yes. weird right. sort of a way. Yeah. Right. He's just, like, extra baggage. She has to go down and save and stuff. Right. Like, yeah. And 
you know, probably the reason for her near death. Uh, but she's well, sort of sure. having her like baby, like Sarah but Connor. But of course, then he, he frees her. You know, we got to remember this. He does this. free you know, her. That's the point. Like she doesn't get on the boat with her mom. Yeah. So she gets to be her own person after the. But I like all. I mean, You're freedom. In every I, way. I like well, I like Yoan Griffith navigating through the, the he sea of job in this of frozen corpses. Yeah. I think he does that's a good really job. Scary yeah. too. It's really scary. And it's weirdly, like, immediate, you know? Yeah. Like, this is only, like, an hour or two later, yeah. and they're all yeah. icicles, basically. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, we should have mentioned in the tight... The best part of the whole sinking scene is is the dome breaking. Oh, The yeah. water coming through the dome. Oh, yeah. That is the one moment that still feels so overwhelming. You cannot believe they did that. Yeah. Because it's real. Like... Yeah. And the, you can see... I've watched it so many times, the making of Jack's sections, where, like, you can see the footage of just them. They're all, like, hanging out in the water. And then camera goes like action, and like a million gallons of water come oh through the God. dome. It's crazy. Yeah, so horrible. And it also just it really like, looks. It looks like. It, I mean, it looks yeah. like barely contained. We should talk about the PCP before I forget. Yeah, that's also not a quick reset. There's one other moment <laughs> that I want to uh, quickly isolate because I think it's a beautiful Cameron moment where it's contained in one shot, and it's like a masterful piece of storytelling is when uh, Ismail gets on the lifeboat, when he jumps on. Oh, yeah. Oh, that's so good. Yeah. And then they, they, they pull focus yes. from Murdoch yeah, to it's him. It's a rack focus. There are no cuts. Oh. And it's he jumps in the lifeboat. Yeah. I think you start on the the crewman, right? You, you start on Murdoch. Right, Murdoch. Then Ismail walks past him, sneaks by in his blind spot, gets on yeah. the boat. He's waiting there, like, looking to be caught. Oh, it's so Then you, yeah. rack focus. You see Ismail clock right. him. No, uh, Murdoch. Clock. Murdoch yeah, clock yeah. him and then go like, okay, lower the boat. Yeah. And oh. Ismail sort of takes this like sigh yeah. as, the, as the lifeboat goes down and it's lower and he's out of view. He closes his eyes and has a sigh of relief and then he opens his eyes and there's kind of a look of terror of yeah. like, now I have to live with myself. Yeah. Right, which yeah. is famously Ismail was dragged in the press for being a coward because he didn't go down yeah. with the ship and he would like testify before Congress. It was like a whole big thing. But that's like a moment where it's like, this is why Cameron's good at his job. Yeah. Ugh. Like, that this is, is why he's scene. the anti-Griffin, because he knows how to do something like a- that. Emily, anything you want to mention in the in sinking? The, in any, the other, sinking? any other moments? We're I'm sure we're forgetting so many good little moments, because there are so I mean, many. And we only there is the, there is the, the captain, uh, the captain and the, and the, uh, oh, captain? With, yeah, with, with the, 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 the suicide by Bernard broken Hill. glass, yeah. by, yeah, by, yeah, that's, uh, that's a, that's a very unforgettable scene as well. I mean, he's the way great. it's, the, the, it's okay. He's I so would say this yeah. this this movie maybe uh maybe romanticizes suicide a little more than it should given Sure. I mean I like mean, but then at the same time the people jumping off is terrifying. That's terrifying, but, but, but I Murdoch I, and Murdoch and, and Ismail too. It's just like it's like okay uh, what are your options? Yeah, okay, here? good job. I, like, yeah, good, yeah, I guess. But I mean it it is appropriate to the era where that was there you know this was a, a courage and the right. power to subsess era right. it's right before world war ii mm-hmm. where that played into it so much so yeah like i think the idea the weird noble idea of suicide in this sort of extreme circumstance i would i would still in that situation rather than kill myself to make a point i would like do my best to get everybody else on a lifeboat probably Look, if you want to shade captain smith i war, i'm just <laughs> A hundred plus years did, later, made a few mistakes. <laughs> I mean, he, yeah, he, his his record is maybe not spotless. Uh, <laughs> I can think of one trip. big. Yeah. <laughs> um, goes down. I will say, um, I will, I will make my, one parallel. I mean, I'm really on this podcast just to talk about Titanic Adventure Out of Time. <laughs> so in in Titanic Adventure Out of Time, there is a medium character. Uh, who is uh, a, a, a expert in the paranormal. Sure. And he's been kind of helping you with this case and everything. Um, and so once you get to the sea... Oh, also, when the ship starts sinking, the layout of the ship changes. When you go up and down decks, it looks like you're going uphill and downhill on it. Oh, that's cool. Um, ah, shit. That's and, cool. At one point... <laughs> God damn it, that's cool. Uh, oh, fuck. It's cool. And at one point... You run into the media, and this is like in like zero, like you, you, it's, it's about to, it's about to split in half or whatever. You know, it's like very, very close to the wire, and you run into the the medium character, and you can't. It's like an, it's an interaction you can't click away from. Like you have no uh-huh. choice, and he's like. I know where you're from. I know that you're not from this time. Wow. And, stuff. and it's so scary. It's like very, very chill. Also, video games just terrify me no matter what. Video games are the A video best. game doesn't so need scary. to be scary. It will terrify me. But I remember that a lot from the sinking sequence. Uh, I want to offer a quick corrective. Uh, video games are not the best. Movies are the best. Movies oh, are Movies are one. good, too. Movies are not. Oh, one. I don't think that video games are the she best. She just thinks they're the scariest. D- David said the incorrect thing. 
You oh. you said nothing offensive. David said video games are the best, which I, I say a lot of things are the best. That. I don't think the video games are the best. I've even said Griffin's the best. Well, that's not true. We know that's not true. That's objectively untrue. J- so Jack dies of hypothermia. Yeah, he's real blue. After telling Rose that she has to live and have a nice life. It's kind of foreshadowing for Avatar, because this is a movie about people getting real blue. True. All it's those true. people. I can't deny it. Getting blue. Uh, and then there's the whole sequence where Rose gets the whistle and then she's rescued i mean yeah, it's, it's, cool. it's intense even though you know she's gonna make it because she's old and tough. also when they are oh say okay so they get on the carpathia that's, that's right the ship, the ship that, that, rescued that them. rescues them and there is that amazing shot where where cal walks by yeah. and oh and, and she's in the blocked. shawl yeah. timed yeah and then uh, and isn't her mom there too no, and we don't see him. her. Yeah. I mean, she did survive. Right. Is, we at don't, least yeah. it's implied. But, but we, don't, we only see by. Cal. He, like, stalks through, and the guy's just like, oh, it wouldn't be your lot over here, you know? Yeah. But he, like, stalks through the, the third class deck or whatever. When I'm feeling very pretentious, I say that film, at the end of the day, is the study of characters in space and time. <laughs> right? As and opposed that, to what? I, I don't know. Farts and giggles. <laughs> <laughs> But but that moment's like a perfect example of that. Where like that's human drama through the right. relation of two yeah. people in timing with each other, and it's if good. her head moves a second earlier, a second later, and you cut and you cut to Gloria Stewart saying, "Well, he put a pistol in his mouth." Which yeah, it's pretty brutal. Which yeah. I love, and then yeah, and during and, the Wall Street crash, and then you see like Paxton and crew listening to the story, and they're like, "Well, that fucking sucks." Like this, uh, we forgot that the story was gonna have a bad ending. Yeah, yeah, we were all caught up in the drawing thing. It seemed really hot, <laughs> fun. Then everybody dies. Oh, right. Oh, Titanic. And right. she does That's that, right. like, you know, like, yeah. you know, a lot of people went in the water and one, but one, like, she does the whole, yeah. 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 Cal, what, what, he, like, married someone else and got his fortune and then the stock market crashed and then he put a pistol in his mouth and she's like, nope, 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 blah, blah, Mm-hmm. Yep. Yeah. So to speak. Um, yeah. And that's the end of, uh, well, the, then the there's flashbacky stuff. Pretty much. Okay. And then, yeah, there's a cut scene that they thankfully cut where. Well, first we have Bill Paxton on the deck with a cigar and he was like, I was going to smoke this oh, when yeah. we found the heart of the diamond. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He throws out, he's talking to Susie Amos and he's they're like, gonna, you they're know, gonna hook up. three years I haven't thought about anything other than Titanic, but I never really got it until now. All right. Yeah. And then she's like, I want to marry you, James Cameron. <laughs> You are so charming and your drive and focus, yes. James Cameron. Yeah, yeah. Let's you were always so very attractive. So obsessed with your explorations, you forgot that humans existed. Yep. I can perhaps beat that tie back to the real world, James Cameron. <laughs> then we cut to her throwing the ocean diamond in the ocean. She's, no, she slowly walks up to the bow of the ship. I know that Emily was correcting me, but I like to think that you were just angry that she threw the diamond. <laughs> no! <laughs> is that really the last of it, or is it the scene where she's asleep? Is that the end? That's the, the, scene, end. That's the, the end. scene where she's asleep is the end. Okay, okay. Yeah, yeah okay, but okay. before okay. then, she throws yeah, yeah, the diamond yeah, yeah, yeah. in the ocean okay. with a little like, oop. But she walks up and you think she's, she's just going to do... Yeah, she's barefoot. barefoot. She's in like a nighty. Right, and her hands are clasped and you think it's just because she's an old lady. And then she gets up and you're like, oh, it's replicating the moment. But then, ooh, look there, heart of the diamond, cut back. Oh, when she was on the ship, she found in the pocket of the coat. Yeah, that's right. And of course, she didn't cash it in and didn't want to live on Cal's money or whatever. But like, I I mean, the idea, right, is that she's now back at the place. Yeah. I mean, as we know, a woman's heart is a deep ocean of secrets, as she says. We all know that. And uh, It's reductive to say it again. (laughs) But like, right, she's like commemorating, like Jack is below her. That's, That's the idea, right? Right. She's returned to his grave. And like, yeah. this is right on the Titanic. Yeah. My, here's my other read on it. Okay? It's corny, but you know. Here's my other read they, on it. They cut the whole scene where Bill Paxton tries to stop her, and because, she's like, no. no, Bill Paxton, haven't you learned? Do you not know about this? It's one no. of the worst deleted scenes of it's, all that's time. That's horrible. They cut this whole thing where, like, he's like, but I want the diamond. She's like, no, the diamond, you don't really. You're like, it's the story of Titanic. And he's like, you're right. And then she throws it in the water. Oh, my God. And no. James Cameron watched it and correctly was like, I don't think people care about Bill Paxton. Yeah, no, 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 no. Well, and here's the thing I like is by omitting that part of the scene, because it's literally just like the scene cuts out early. But but even earlier than that, because it's supposed to be that he tries to stop her. Yeah. yeah. So it's like in between two cuts of the sequence as we have it right now is this whole other section that's not oh. in there. Yeah. Okay. Um, It's supposed to be that he, from the talk to Susie Amos catches her once she's on the balcony yeah. and they're like what 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 are you doing um I like that the way it's cut now there's sort of a read that one of the reasons she's throwing it back into the ocean is that like let him find it if he wants 
Oh, sure. I didn't even think of that. Sure. Because right. it'd be like a bummer just to hand it to him and be like, I had it the whole time. Huh. You know? Like, right. I, I think right. it's like, I like this guy. I tested him. My, my granddaughter right. seems to be All right. kicking okay. it off. All right. I, I get like it. Let's, we got we to wrap up. So. Okay. I just realized it's 7 p.m. Yeah. It's, it's, it's We've been going on for a long time. Okay. We goes to bed. Pan across <laughs> the pictures. Ooh, look we at this. We see that she lived this rich life. She got to ride a horse with a, with her leg on either side. Yeah, man. Uh, call yeah. back. Uh, call back, call back, call back. But then, I mean, the, the dream but she has. Uh, it's, she goes uh, yeah. Back to anyway. she goes back All to the to nice time. characters are there. None of the mean characters. Mm-hmm. Like Andrews is there, but yeah. not like mean old Cal and her mom or whatever. Yeah. Jack's in his his street clothes, he not in the so white handsome. coat and tails, and he's at the it clock. Gives her a little smile, and then she then they pan up to the sky. She's dead, right? That's the right. idea, Every you know. This is Titanic. you cut right to the song. The ship's yeah. called. Yeah, Titanic. which Avatar pulls the same trick, and it is a bummer. Oh, it does one thing before it cuts to the song. What? Written, Written and directed, directed by James Cameron. Well, you know. He he lets that really land with a thud. Because it's like, that's the mic drop moment. If you've made a great movie. James Cameron. <laughs> James Cameron. <laughs> uh, film won 11 Oscars, we should say. Yes, a lot. Uh, the most ever. Tied yeah. with All About Eve and. Ben-Hur? No, no, sorry. Tied with Ben-Hur and Lord of the Rings. All About Eve has the most nominations. Yeah. Because right. it got like four out of five supporting. Sure. Yeah. yeah. yeah, yeah. But uh, yeah, any last thoughts on? I mean, we've said that that movie is a happy has a happy ending somehow. Okay, and, and that won it. Everything. Okay, that makes the difference. Okay. I want to talk really briefly about the heart of the ocean. Oh yeah, go ahead. Right, I googled that. So, I so the weird thing about a lot of things in this movie actually is that the movie is about how, for example, the heart of the ocean is like a dog collar. And sure, right, it it like, like shackles a, uh, her yeah, to him, a, yeah. But uh, but everybody wanted a little replica heart yes. of the ocean necklace in, in fact, 1997. Katie, I should say, told me that at her sister's bachelorette party, everyone wore hearts of the ocean. Oh my god! Yep. I mean, you could. I, I remember in Seventeen magazine, you could cut out a little order form and send in for your like thirty dollar like your heart cubic of the ocean. zirconia yeah, or yeah. whatever. Yeah. Um, I I think that's very uh. I think that's very interesting. I think they did make a actual replica of it with a diamond that big that was auctioned at a Princess Di Memorial. I mean, that's uh, that's just a crash of late 90s things. 1998. So that is uh, somebody decided to spend $2.2 million on that thing. So, um, you know what the catch was, though? You had to pick it up from the bottom of the ocean. <laughs> yeah, right. You had to go down there. You had to go down the bottom mm-hmm, of the ocean. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Um, and well, I, I just think, it, oh, and also Celine Dion wore I, I looked this up all up before I got on this podcast, but Celine Dion wore it uh, when she sang My Heart Will Go On at, at the, the Academy at the Awards. Oscars? Yes. Mm-hmm. Um, she was famously sick or something, right? Well, like she, Michael Jordan's flu game. The other thing about that song is the recorded version of it, her second take. Oh, That's boy. That's pretty yep. impressive. That's how she makes the box. Yep. Can we play the box office game yeah. briefly? And then we gotta get out of here. December twenty first, nineteen ninety seven. Titanic number one, twenty eight million dollars. Uh, At of, the time, thought it was a disastrous opening. Very it's bad. Like there's opening. no way it's gonna make back its budget. With of that. course, its total domestic gross, forgetting the three D re release, is six hundred million dollars. Right it's on world, the nugget. Worldwide yeah. gross is two point one billion dollars. After insane. you include the three D re release, yeah, it's still one of only two movies in history to get two billion. Uh, uh, yeah, and okay. if you look at the weekends, it's 28, 35, 33, 28, 30, 36, 25, 25, 30, 23, 28, 32. It's like just making that for four months. Its biggest weekend was its fifth weekend? Yeah, that sounds right. Yeah, that's crazy. Okay. You know, and so that's it, that's how it was just a phenomenon. People just kept going back to see it. Okay, so 1997, Number December. two is a new release in a huge franchise. Whew. It's a dis. It's seen as a disappointing entry in this franchise. Although I've always had a soft spot for it, but it's kind of bad. Uh, is it uh, Tomorrow Never Dies? Yes, wow. <laughs> that was pretty good. Thank wow. you. Twenty five mil. Okay, I remember seeing it. I never liked it very much. It made one twenty five total. That's Michelle Yeoh and Jonathan Price. Terry Hatcher. Yeah, yeah. I'm not a huge fan. Number of that. three is a sequel to a smash hit 1996 film. That's a quick turnaround. Yeah. Is it a comedy? Nope. What's the other kind of thing that gets quick turnaround? Horror? Yep. I still know what you did last summer? No. Nope. Scream 2? Yeah. There we go. 50, oh, number four. 55 mil after two weeks. Number four number is a film. Number four. We were talking about on Twitter recently. <laughs> oh, really? You and um, I? What's your take on this movie, Emily, without giving away the name? Because you seem very excited. 
Um, I remember being really surprised by this movie at the time. Uh, this movie freaked me out when I was yeah. a kid. Yeah. Really is, freaked me out. It was not what you thought it was going to be. No. And uh, it is the start of a big a director's big career. career. A very although big I would not call him a great director, although he's an interesting. But a big director. Yeah, interesting character. A, a, a large grossing director. For sure. Was it was it his number one first movie or was it his breakout movie? It's his breakout movie. It okay. opens to $6 million, makes $61 million domestic, 122 worldwide. Uh boy, how else? It's a kids movie, but it's too fucked up for kids. Yeah. It's really weird. You like this movie, I think. I'm sure I do. I mean, if you say it's a kids movie and it's too there weird. There was never a sequel. Never a sequel. It has an animal in it. It has an animal. I feel like I want to rush you just because we got to get out of here. Yeah. It's a fuck The name movie. of the animal, like the not the name, the proper name of the animal, but yeah. the kind of animal is in the title. Mhm. Jesus Christ. And the animal is being persecuted, one could say. <laughs> <laughs> what is it? Mouse hunt. Oh! <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I love this movie. I was tweeting about this the other night. <laughs> you were. You were tweeting about it the other night. What was your tweet again? I can't even remember. Uh, it, oh, God, I can't even remember. Yeah, it was I something remember. about, remember that movie that. where Nathan Hain Lane hunts a mouse? And I, I said, yes, it's called Hunts a Mouse. <laughs> that was my joke. <laughs> Uh, number five. Mouse Hunt rules. Oh. Yeah, but I remember that scene where he throws up the bug? Yeah. That was the scene that I couldn't take. It's really, really gross. That's the I thing I 10. like is is Mouse Hunt is too disturbing to be a children's yeah. and movie. The, and then there's the whole thing with Mark Williams plays the nice exterminator man with the big machine, and then they smash his machine, and I didn't like that. He was, like, too vulnerable for me to see that. Uh, that was his number was one like first movie. It was, like, one of movie. these, like... Um, like Babe Pig in the City right. era things yeah. where it's like these yeah. weird miscalculations about what should be in a kid's movie. Right. But Very true. kind of interesting. Right. Those were like, always, of course, yeah, warped yeah. many a kid. Yeah. Like, yeah. Those were always the movies that spoke to me most as a, tro- as a child. Or like Return yeah. to Oz or something. I yeah. loved yeah. Return to Oz. Yeah. I love The Wiz. Like kids movies that were like weirdly upsetting yeah. I was always really into and visually like yeah. kind of just on a bizarre nightmare scape playing. Well, here's another one. <laughs> yeah, I, I saw this in theaters. It contains a scene where he you catches guys something a a baseball you guys use this word a we, lot on your podcast. We used to use this word show. all the time on the Star Trek, uh, Star Wars days. We used to use this word a lot. Watto? No, <laughs> there was never a movie called Watto. It was, oh, right, it's it called Watto out, though. It came out before Episode One. Right, right. It prepared everybody right, to fall in love right, with it did. It irascible <laughs> um, junk dealer. That old kook. I be- Is it a remake? <laughs> yeah, it is. It's a, a remake. remake. It's a mad scientist movie. It made ninety-two million dollars. Oh, flubber. Flubber. <laughs> it's a remake of The Absent Minded Professor. Disney's Flubber. Yeah. Right. We use that word a lot. I forgot about that. Some other <laughs> movies in the top 10 Home Alone 3. Ooh. Oh, boy. Uh, for Directed Rich- by Raja Gosnell. Yeah. For Richer or Poorer. Uh, yeah. The Tim Allen, Kirstie Allen Amish Witness. movie. Yeah. yeah. Amish Dodd. Oh. Not Amistad, but Amishstad. No, no. Yeah. Okay. Amistad. Right. Uh, we'll be talking more about that soon. We will. Anastasia, The Rainmaker, yeah. Alien You mean Amistasia, but yeah, go on. Amish, Amistasia. Amish Resurrection. Resurrection. Yeah. Which is a weird one. Yeah. yeah. Anyway. Crazy. Well, that's been our episode. We've <laughs> talked too much about everything. So, in total, I think we, three and a half hours. Jesus I think Christ. we beat the running time. Remember that note we got about Shorter? Yeah, we got that literally two well, days ago. In real, it's two podcasts of about an hour 45 each. Yeah, well, an hour 30 and an hour 45-ish. Um, are you going to release these on the same day? No. Yeah. No. Okay. Well, no. We got to space um, I want to say that I think this movie is better than Terminator 2. Wow. I agree. Uh, uh, when I watched it, I was like, oh, this is my favorite in fact, I, movie. I totally I've been, forgot about it. I've been that. watching most of them to prepare myself for this podcast, oh. most, of, most of the Cameron movies. Um, I don't like it. Terminator 2. Oh, oh, I like Terminator 2. I want to put not, that out I'm not there. going yeah. there, there with you, but... I I'm mean, not that into it. Any reason? God, you're trying to start a fight at two hours in. I, I think know. it's kind of boring. I think wow. I think wow. the, a lot of the stuff that works for me in Terminator, the first Terminator, mm-hmm. it's just taken up to such a level where all of it is based on stuff that happens off screen that it's really hard for me to hang out with the stakes. Interesting. You know? Anyway. Do you like aliens? Not as much as aliens. Well, I'm with you on that, wow. but do you like aliens? It's okay. It's fine. Wow. Okay, well... we'll Do you like Avatar? I've never seen Avatar. Whoa! Are you going to watch it? Sure, I'll watch Avatar. (laughs) Anyway... What about True Lies? I I have never seen True Lies either. That one's a weird one. Um... I yeah, I just wanted to get my um, unpopular opinions out there before I uh, vanish into the night. Uh, Loser Yoshida, <laughs> let loose onto the streets of Manhattan. Well, uh, you'll be back, Yoshida. I'm be sure yeah. you will be back with us. Not yeah. too long. 
Uh, Bruiser uh, Yoshi is never down for the count. She's exactly. always ready for another fight. Yep. Uh, thank you so much for being on the show. Thank you guys for having uh, me. Thank you to Katie. Yep. Thank uh, you, th- Katie. Thank you to Charlie. Thank, thank you, Charlie. Charlie. Thank you to producer Ben. Thank God Katie left, actually, because yeah. we would have fucking kept her trapped oh. in here till seven. That yeah. baby would have eaten us all alive. Oh yeah. my God. It's the cutest baby in the world, but. Yeah. Great baby. Let's yeah. get that off. The best baby I've ever seen. Great baby. Um, uh, thanks so yeah, to Ben for thanks your to Ben art. for the drawing. We'll post that online. Everyone get excited. Uh, people follow Emily on Twitter. Yep, at oh, Emily. Katie. Recently Yoshida. changed Twitter. her avatar. It really freaked me out. But oh, I guess boy. it was you know for a long time. Yeah, it, 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 was, it was. I a had long that time avatar, coming. which was Boo mm-hmm. from from Mario Brothers. I had that from Halloween of 2012 or 20, okay. 2013. All right, forgiven. Yeah. So. It was just I I changed it for Halloween and it stuck. Yeah, no, I remember. Changed. Just a good good avatar. Anyway. Um, yeah. Uh, so check all that out. Rate, review, subscribe to our podcast. Next week we'll be back with a double feature of the two Cameron documentaries, <laughs> and what's going to definitely be a real short episode. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Should we even do it? I think we got it. Okay. I think we got it. Okay. Yeah. Uh, thank you everybody for listening. Sure. Uh, keep it up. Good job, Blankies. Uh, uh, please say nice things about your mommy, Emily Yoshida. On the Reddit. Uh, Mother Blankies. Okay. Uh, And, as always, my mommy likes to draw. She draws with a pencil. She puts all the drawings on paper. This has been a UCB Comedy production. Check out our other shows on the UCB Comedy Podcast Network. (laughs) Thank <laughs> you.